Are you guys looking for them? Hey, we really need to make a buck off of Look at all the wagons out there. This is our pick. It would need $3,000. Well, that's a lot. The box is great. The radio's crap. Send you a little baller. It's your little baller. Scott, I found the ultimate cigar box for you. <laughs> I'm Scott Cousins. I'm Sheldon Smithens. We're pickers. We travel all over Canada, coast to coast, from the West Rocky Mountains to the Eastern Shores, and all the back roads in between. Looking for hidden gems in people's basements, attics, and bars. Sometimes we take a gamble, trust in our gut to make a buck. Just like the people we meet, every story is different. It's not junk to us. How do you make two thousand dollars in the antique business? Start with five. Yeah. I was <laughs> Yikes. Sheldon and I are very different people. He came up through the auction ranks, where I came up through the collecting ranks. And that's a killer, isn't it? I'm looking for things that have stood the test of time. Oh, I love it. I'm not looking for anything that came with a little cardboard box around. <laughs> that's where all the money is. Come on. Oh, I want that. Yeah. Look at the smile on his face. I don't really care what anyone thinks of whether I'm buying junk or not. Just some of your junk. We spend a ton of time together. The only thing is, is that Sheldon is a terrible, terrible guy. Yeah. I will stop the call. Hey, I think I gotta have my wits about me. Hey, let me grab the map. Let's plan the day. Yeah, I'm hungry too. I wonder if the train's running. This place hasn't changed at all, has it? There you go, guys. Thanks. We'll head down the cowboy trail. That's a nice drive, actually. We're heading over towards sort of the mining territory, right? Exactly. Bellevue. Yeah. This is virgin territory. Yeah. yeah. And then as we go a little bit farther east here, we get into more cowboy country, western memorabilia. Nice, too. Yeah. Have a great day. Thank you. And behave you yourself. I, Thank you. I always do. It's a beautiful morning in southern Alberta. The skies have opened, the sun is shining, and we've got a pick to be had. And I've got some good news for you. What's that? An old family friend, Manny, gave me a call. His parents have now passed away. They're selling the house. He's got some things he wants to sell, including a totem pole. Wow. Yeah. Big one. How big? Too big to put in the house. Seriously? Yeah. Because for every big totem pole, you'll see 500 little totem poles. To have a chance at a big one, that makes me excited. Not the size matters. <laughs> Not the size. How it gets you. <laughs> this is us right here. All right. Oh, well, there's a totem pole. It's a big one. Yeah, I'm impressed already. As soon as I walked up the driveway, I saw the totem pole. And that's big, it's loud, and it's old. You look at it and you say, wow. How are you doing? That seemed to have caught someone's eye. Yeah, well, it's, it's an interesting thing. It, where'd it come from? Uh, it came from around the Banff Corridor. Alberta? So my dad was into the native stuff and... Uh, did he have it made for him or did you just no, find it somewhere? No, he bought it. When I looked at the totem pole, as soon as I came up the driveway, I said, that's a white man totem pole. It looks not so much carved by a native. You normally don't see Indians in headdresses on Indian totem poles. They had animals, they had the spirit world more so than individuals. It was the weirdest totem pole I've ever seen, and it's a little bit naughty. It's interesting how the artist has used the knots. <laughs> I find that quite interesting <laughs> how they use the knots, yeah. yeah. This was out at their country home, and then when that country home was sold, um, it brought it here and put it into concrete. Canadians love totem poles. Native people like them, non-native people like them. Collectors like them, decorators like them. I love totem poles. What What's thinking? it going to take for us to walk home with a totem pole here today? Well, um, I was thinking in somewhere 750, 800, somewhere in the 750 range. Is that so pretty like, strong? Well, that's, that's pretty strong. Pretty Scott? steep. I know Scott really wants that totem pole. 
I mean, yeah. you know, it's one of those things where if, if it's a native one, that might not be a bad mm -hmm. deal, but I, I just got my doubts. So I can see 350-400. Yeah, I was like going to say 400 too. Would you consider that? I really want it, but I want to get it for a good price. Well, like the way I'm looking at it is if, if I don't sell it, then it's going to have to go with the house, and I'd rather sell it. If I got a guy in mind for it, and I think he's really going to want that totem pole. So four and a quarter, and you guys could haul it away right now. So we're not leaving without that if I have anything to say about it. Yeah, four and a quarter? Four and a quarter. Okay. All right, I want the top it's half of the three and a half. Let's go in a little more. There we go. Keep going. There we go. Keep going. Oh, man. In the dark. <laughs> She's out. She's out. Yeah. I think I ripped my shirt. No. Yeah. She's coming in. There we go. Well, that's the gamble of the day. I didn't buy a lottery ticket. Yeah. I bought a totem pole. Yeah. Thank you again. Take care. Close the door on this pit. All right. On to the next one. I'm driving. Now we've got one of the toughest challenges you'll ever have as a picker, and that's trying to pick from a collector, because they love their stuff. Doors notorious around these parts for having a ton of stuff, a ton of carriages, western gear, saddles. I hear he's even got a stagecoach. Doran could be our kind of guy. I don't know about you, but I'm pumped. Oh, yeah, look at all the wagons out there. This is our pick. I was a little concerned when I rolled up and saw all the stuff. That does not speak to me as somebody that's a seller. OK, here we are. The biggest challenge with dealing with people that are collectors is they almost always buy at a higher price. They don't like to sell it. When they do, they want top dollar for everything they sell. I'm Sheldon. Dorn, this is my wife, Tara. Hi, Tara. How are you doing? So do people see you from the highway? Oh, yes. We get a few coming in. I just wondered if you had a wagon wheel for sale. Yeah. <laughs> and what do you say? No, no. <laughs> she always says that my funeral's gonna be at 11 and the auction will be at 2. <laughs> so I might as well take you where it all began. <laughs> my mom was kind of a collector, you know? She never threw anything away. Maybe it gets in your blood that way, I'm not sure. It certainly got into your blood. <laughs> <laughs> There's 385 tons of wagon stuff in here. All my parts are numbered. I know where everything is. Is that right? So do people bring these to you, or do you I go, get you go on for them? bringing them to me. I was kind of a bad boy for a while. There wasn't an auction sale that I wasn't scanning and looking for wagon parts. And, and now I look at it and say, why did I do all of this? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see some of the other collections. Whoa. When he opened the doors to those carriages. Wow, that looks like an old stagecoach. Me, huh? I immediately fixated on the old west style carriage. That I love. <laughs> wow, this is great. You always want to be the driver, right, Scott? Yeah. <laughs> I got to ask you about the hearse. So we've used this for quite a few funerals. And we used it for my father. And this is the nicest riding vehicle we have which makes no sense. Like, folks it's, are... it's the final <laughs> ride. It might as yeah, well be a good I, one. I mean, it's... Well, it's not quite for sale yet, but... Well, I'm not ready to go in it either. <laughs> <laughs> We're here to pick. We want to find some stuff we can buy and sell. Come on in. I've always loved anything that has anything to do with advertising. Looking for stuff with really interesting graphics and optics on it. What about um, the axle grease tin? Well, they've got that nice carriage wheel. They've got little Art Nouveau borders around them. Well, give me a sense as to what you'd like. Um, well, let's walk. OK. This one you wouldn't part with? Um, no. Nice gauntlets. Yeah. Would you part with them? Uh, and this looks like an axe. You know what? It's got a good look to it. Well. What would you want to get out of that one? Um. That's interesting. <laughs> That's yeah. deer hooves. Yeah. Give us a price. Um, what is it? It's a hide scraper, and I, it's not for sale. OK. Sorry. Doran's a great guy, but he's just not ready to sell. Now, what would you want for that? Well, 
you know, that's a royal crown. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about a bottle of Crown Royal? <laughs> well, that'd start for lubricating me to make a deal. <laughs> I had this in mint condition. Yeah, and it's 400 bucks. Yeah. As it is, it's five. Um. <laughs> <laughs> if Doran wants to sell it? No. For five bucks, I'll leave it hanging on the wall. Well, I figured you'd say that. <laughs> now, there's probably a lot of people that said, why didn't he sell that? What would you want for the ladies in men's size? <laughs> oh. You can't be thinking that hard about it. I mean, they are just, uh, <laughs> they are just signs. The for first a thing I have to think about is parting with it. The second oh, okay. thing I think uh, about is how you're much. You're having a little bit of uh, well, parting. You guys have to understand that uh, I rarely sell stuff. When you collect that item, you're not thinking about selling it. You're thinking about keeping it. And I'm not sure when that time kicks in where it's now time to start parting with all this stuff. Let's get her going. Yeah. Let's initiate it. And, uh, um, you don't have a problem with that, do you? Not a problem at all. I know where the bathroom is. But my wife suggests it needs to be soon. Five bucks each is what I'd offer off. <laughs> Deal. All right. Well, we got to start the day somewhere. OK. There we go. There we go. The hardest part is getting the start. Yeah. More than anything else, I bought those signs just to get them going. What about the transit place? That's kind of neat. Is the transit in it? No. It's fitted to hold the transit. So uh, those guys you see doing the uh, leveling at the side of the road, that's the specialty box that would hold a scientific instrument inside. We'll leave you the contents. OK. It's a package deal. <laughs> well, Tara was a real benefit to us because Tara is the one that in the background is giving him the eye signals that says, move it along. Because otherwise, I don't think he'd move anything. Hit Make us with your best shot, Dorn. Oh, the bottom's a little rough on it. Yep, well, I've handled transit boxes before. Stripped down, they look pretty good. Nice oil job. Not going to get rich on that. Five bucks. Done. Let's keep the ball rolling. Or you interested in selling it? Sure. Five bucks, you got a deal? Five bucks, we have a deal. Perfect. What's the story going on the little Indian hand? What would you want for that? You tell me what oh. you do. Do <laughs> you want me to be buyer and seller? <laughs> Cast aluminum. It, obviously, it's screwed onto the side of something, but what is the question? Yeah, good question. That's what I've always been trying to figure out. But it is a neat thing. It looked good on a wall. What would you want for something like that? Oh, probably 60 bucks. Oh! <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was going to say 20. Oh, OK, well. You can come back to my funeral auction. <laughs> <laughs> From my perspective, he just wanted too much for that Indian head. Would you say 30? No. He's hard. Yeah. But the problem for me was I liked it. So where are we going? We got a little room to move. Well, what if I move down to 50? Scott spotted that branding iron. You didn't see this the first time. Hey, it's got an S in it. And that's our logo. We'll just strike it twice. Bingo. What are you looking for on this? Well, that's pretty special initial. <laughs> it wasn't until it wasn't until a couple of minutes ago. How about tell you what? 55 for the pair. Done deal. Perfect. All right. OK. Thanks a lot. Just when we thought we saw it all. This is my tack shed here. I've accumulated some leather goods. Ooh. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow, have you ever? First thing you see when you walk in that tack shed is all that stuff. This is just kind of everything and anything. We've got an old timer Great West. This is a one that is really comfortable. A guy can do a lot of miles on that. That saddle was unbelievable. You don't see Northwest Territories saddles very often for Alberta. Great maker, Great West Saddlery. You just don't find the old high backs. It had been reconditioned a little bit with the original tools, though, which is great. Yeah, fantastic. Is that something that you'd be interested in moving? I would part with it, but it would take some... Crown Royal? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> Probably shares in the company. So what do you talk? Well, a saddle like that, uh, if I was to say goodbye to that today, it would need $3,000. Well, that's a lot. <laughs>
I'll give you that much. Yeah. Well, the problem for us is, Doran, it's just, it's that that's a good price on it if you're a collector, but for us to make some money on it, you know it's here. Now, I noticed over there you've got a bridle. Now that I know them a little bit, I'm looking for things that, that aren't up front, things that are sort of in a box or hidden behind, because then that tells me he's maybe not that attached to it. There's three of them with the pimpy ones. The pimpy ones. <laughs> Let's see if we can do a, a ballpark price. You want to do a package deal? Package deal. This has got a dog. <laughs> Man, Doran, you got too much time. Oh, this has got a deer. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, 125? 100 bucks, you got a deal. Well, okay, I'm going to. We'll do that. You visited the tack room. There you go. Hey, Doran, what about that boot jack? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use it. Make me an offer. That was 30 bucks. Sold. Done. Well, I'll be taking my boots off with that boot jack, and uh, I'll think of Scott and Doran and Tara every time I do. We'll see if we can find you some other goodies. Would that be up for grabs? That's my Dempster horse. You know what those are? The weights off of the old Dempster windmills. Oh, yeah. And they yeah. made horses, they made a rooster. So where would they date from? Oh, 1920s or earlier. So there's not a lot of those around. They did become windmill targets. You can see the bullet hole in through the, <laughs> look at the bullet holes. See, they put rocks in those for weight, eh? Then if they hit the horse with a high-powered rifle, it would just shatter it. So what would you want for that? Uh, those are pretty collectible. That's uh, Canadiana history, or well, actually prairie history. Hmm. I'd have to have four and a half. That's a tempting thing. It's a, it's a great looking thing. That is a good one, isn't it? That seems a bit steep. See, I could do 300 on it. Why don't we go to... That's an original cast iron dempster, bullet holes. <laughs> Do three, and, three and a half. Three and a half? <laughs> three and a half done. Okay, that's another deal. We did get some stuff, and if it hadn't been for that horse, I would have been a little disappointed. But that sort of helped me make this pick worthwhile. Here. <laughs> <laughs> it's been entertaining. You know, it's a tough call what we're going to get for it. I think, though, that it's a quality item. Perfect. I'll get another one from here just so we can get the size. I think we'll find a buyer for that. We'll have to do some phone calls, maybe see if we can get it appraised. Perfect. That'll do her. Let's load her up. What about a hood ornament? <laughs> Check that a little closer. There's not much left of the bottom of that box. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what do you expect for five bucks? <laughs> huh? I think I almost paid five bucks for coffee this morning, so I can't go too far wrong. So this has been real fun. The time with Sheldon and Scott, they wanted to wander through buildings and rummage through boxes. It's like quality time. That's one of the best private collections I've encountered for a long time. And that was worth seeing and making the stop and the trip just to see that. See you later. Well, we've got another pick to go to, so we've got some room in the truck. It's getting a little confusing here. You're the navigator. Doran suggested we stop in and see Elaine. He's got really cool 50s things and some radios. It's always my hope to find a beautiful radio or something in possession. We've only got a bit of time to deal with the lane because you shut down, the, the light's going. So this is going to be a speed pick. Whoa, whoa, whoa Scott, Scott, easy, buddy. Just navigate, don't talk. <laughs> the only thing I'm worried about is that horse, because if it tipped over and hit hard, we might lose our biggest investment there. <laughs> the only problem with what Doran told us about Elaine is Elaine's a picker. 
I have this church here, and I figure, well, I can use it for my storage for now, for my picking. And you never have enough room. It's just uh, one of those things. Yeah, it's tough to pick from a collector. It's really tough to pick from a picker. I'm thinking it's not your tree. What used to be a tree. Oh, here. Okay. Well, let's see what we can get. Hi, guys. How are you? I've been waiting for you. Yeah. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> So the place is a bit of a mess. Hey, we like it messy. Wow, there's some old stuff in here. I've been a picker all my life. What I collect the most is antique building material from Alberta. Wow. I love taking apart old farmhouse for the lumber, for the molding, the baseboard, the doors, fireplace, mantles. Scott knows what he's looking for. He's a pro. He knows his radios. And if there's a good one to be had, he'll find it. Oh, man, I'd like to buy something. Well, that's why I'm looking quickly here. We, we don't have much time. What are you guys looking for, though? Oh, you know, hey, we don't think you can make a buck off of it. There is a technique that when we go in to buy, we don't necessarily zero in and tip our hand that a certain item is the primo item of the whole sale. Strategically, I didn't express too much interest in those radios, but I didn't want one of the better things to be the first deal. There are cowboy boot lamps. Look at that Calgary Stampede wallpaper. Never seen that before. I'm guessing this paper is 50s, 40s? Yeah, 40s it looks like to me. Huh, fantastic. That's a pity. There's more stuff over here, eh? Well, let's look. Holy smokes, there's some light fixtures in here. Let me just peek around the corner here. That's a great lamp base. Elaine, what would you need for that? 20. 20 bucks? Yeah. Sold. Your partner bought something. Yeah. He did. I broke the ice. <laughs> is the van empty? Uh, th that would be telling. You'd love to fill our van up, wouldn't you? Elaine is just like us. He likes history. He'll buy and sell anything and turn it over at a profit. If he's got a good thing, he wants a good dollar for it. What are you looking to get out of the box of tins? Why don't you make me an offer for the whole box? I would go 20 on the three. Come on, that's too low. Look at this peanut one. You see, it's the boring one, though, right? You guys are low-balling me. What do you expect? We're trying to make some money on it. He's starting high, and I'm lowballing him every time. And then he gives me this look like he's just offended by my offer. It's the dance you have to do sometimes. So I'm going to look around and see what else you got. Let's see. That's an old store tin, but unfortunately, it's really rough. This would be from the 1920s or so, probably, this tin. So what would you want for that tin in that condition? OK. Uh... Since you're a low baller. That's Mr. Low Baller to you. <laughs> Mr. Low Baller? Yeah? Yeah. I probably paid 25 for it. You did not. Well, you know, you can't expect to find them always mint, you know? Uh, he does the dance just for fun. OK, now, are these radios? No, those are my income tax. Oh, you said you, you said yeah. Scott watch. was, like, looking for stuff that can flip quickly, which is uh, what's OK with me. I do the same. You know Scott's interested in radios. Radios? Yeah. I got about 200 radios. 200? <laughs> Where are they? I've got boxes and boxes of them. Yeah, boxes and boxes of them. Like this town. Oh, I, yeah. I have them all in here. For a while, I was buying any radios. If it was $10, I would buy it. As long as it's got color, plastic, and it looks good on the shelf. Hey, Scott, here's a Marconi. It's colorful, and it's Canadian. Yeah, that's a nice one. I love like that. That's called Beetle. I was pumped when I saw them, and then every box I opened, there was more radios and better radios. The best thing I've ever bought is at a garage sale, and there was a radio. I paid 40 bucks for it, probably worth 1400 bucks. You got some neat radios, though, here. So what? you never did give me the price per radio. Well, it's kind of they're all different, right? Why? But, uh, Why are they different? That's hot. That, that's a hot radio. Look at the color on there. It's black. Motorola. Black isn't a color. He's trying to build these things up like they're Fabergé Easter eggs. And I'm trying to beat them down like they're something that was dug out of the ground. They call that beetle. Beetle. Beetle plastic. It's got to go one, two, three, four, five cracks in it. Come on. We both know what they are, and we both know what they're worth, and we're going to get there. How much do you want for these little stand-ups? These one be 50. 15? 50. 50. 50. 5 -0. 5 -0. When you're dealing with a guy like Elaine who loves the game as much as he loves the stuff, it's all about sort of just positioning yourself. Look at that. 
Mm. I can't sell those for 50 bucks. How much for the little guy? That's the, the colors that people want. That's 40 bucks. I know, but... But you're a... charging me retail. He's a member of the Pickers Union. <laughs> <laughs> you, you gotta give a fellow member a, a break. See, you got a lot of radios here that I like. That's another one. But the problem is I gotta be able to make money on it. I know. Is this the Old Man River? You're the first person I, I meet that likes this kind of stuff. I love this picture. How's town? <laughs> because I like you, I'll give it to you for ten. Because Thanks. you know you really. Does that really... mean you don't like me? Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> ho 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 ho! Look at this baby here. Unfortunately, the this part of it's toast, right? It's too bad I have a Catalan one here. Do you? Let's find it. I'll wait. <laughs> With rare exception, a Catalan radio is the top of the heap with respect to radios. They start at a couple hundred bucks and they go up to twenty-five, thirty-five thousand dollars. Let's find that Catalan, because I don't mind paying a good dollar for a good radio. The Catalan that I have is just a small, it's called a Tom Tom. I want it. There's Tom Thumbs and there's Tom Thumb. The way he's describing it, that's a really expensive radio. You're very persistent. But it's... Oh, yeah, it's a different Tom Thumb. So what would you want for that one? Because it's not the one I was thinking of. $50. I'm not going to offer that. <laughs> so, Elaine, what I'd like to do, if I could, is I'd like to grab a bunch of radios, okay. put them aside, show you which ones I want, and make you an offer on them. It's two guys that really know what they're doing, battling it out. This one he is going to have to be. I paid 70 for that one. I stepped aside and let them do their thing, but I love watching Scott in action. Play ball! And it's a nice hit into left field. Oh. Ooh, that's a nice one. Something's missing. Ooh, this is a hot one. Look at the ding there. Beautiful radio, but broken. He's rounding first and going on. That one time was selling at 10 grand on eBay. Yeah, but that was that was the TR55. Yeah. There's a difference. What about that Sony there? No, it's got a big chunk out of the bottom of it. Cool clean up well. Like, who, what are you, dreaming? <laughs> He's clean past second base. Unbelievable! Some of these are $10 radios, as you know. Like that one, I mean, come on. It's white, it's chipped. These ones are not exactly the most attractive radio you've ever seen. You gotta admit that. <clears throat> the one I'm most keen about is that pile here. Well, that's, that's a good radio. It's in the box shape. is great. Yeah. The radio's crap. He's rounding third. It looks like he's going to go for it. Okay, 32 radios. What are we talking? Well, that's going to be hard. It's too much. I haven't said the number. <laughs> <laughs> and here he comes. Let's talk a ballpark number. I'm trying to make money on yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And you're going to be mad at me when I say this, but I'm going to say 400 bucks. 400 bucks? Yeah, I told you you were going to be yeah. mad at me. It's going to take you six months to make more than 400 bucks on these things. Holy cow, I think he's going to make it. Well, I tell you, I'll go 500, or I'll keep the, these ones and I'll sell it even cheaper. You picked the best one. He's sliding, and he's... So, 450, final offer. Sold. It's okay. Ultimately, we hammered him down at 450, which we thought was a really good price, particularly where he started from. Last load. Sun's going down. The sun's going down. <laughs> Take that. We had a great time. We shook hands, smiled. It was nice fun doing business. business. Thank Bye, you. guys. That was some speed picking. <laughs> Bastard and I like, has got to do what you do, right? Yeah. Hopefully, we won't find too many nicks. Hopefully, it won't look like the bottom of your box that you bought today. <laughs> You want to just keep reminding me of that one, don't you? <laughs> I know you will when it happens to me. I'm dying to know what those radios are worth. Why don't we give Lauren a call? I've known Lauren for 20 plus years, and Lauren knows pretty much everything there is to know about 50 stuff, retro stuff, and he specializes in radios. I took a couple pictures. I was pretty sure that we got a good buy on those radios, but I wanted to call Lauren just to make sure. Can you hear me, Lauren? You get those pictures of those radios I sent you. Well, I'm hoping when the dust settles on the radios that we're going to double out on those for sure. There's a bunch of stuff there. Can you give me an idea? That little green rock coin? Yeah. 
takes the sting out of the $100 uh, gas bill we just encountered. We're heading to Bellevue. This area of southern Alberta around the Crow's Nest Pass is famous for its ghost towns. So we're going to see some interesting things, I think, today. We've got a pick to be had. We've been contacted by a lady by the name of Bernie. She's uh, got a local history museum, all sorts of mining things, things from some of the ghost towns around the area. She's moving to the city and wants to sell the whole museum. Do you know if she sold anything off before we got here? Apparently not. I think the museum's pretty much intact the way it's been for 35, 40 years. Wow. This is Bernie. It's got a real local flavor to it and we're gonna go in there and see what interests us and see if we can strike up a deal with Bernie. Hi. Hey, good morning. How are good you? Good morning. Scott, how Hi, are you? Hi, Scott, nice to meet you. Hi, Bernie. Hi, Sheldon. Ready to see some antiques? We sure are. We've got quite the collection. My family came here from Italy in 1901. There was nine children in the family, three uncles, grandfathers and grandmothers, but 95% of the family mine, so we just had a lot of that stuff handed down. Okay, so this used to be our old chicken coop. You watch your step here. The okay, floor that's caved a big in. Drop, that it? is a big drop. And we'll start in this room probably. Oh, okay. Wow. Now you walk into that first room in the museum and it hits you. Hard to know where to start. It's just wall-to-wall -wall bottles, beer bottles, pop bottles, stoneware bottles, you name it. We had miners and seamstresses and carpenters in the family, so everybody brought a little bit of everything. Right. So is everything up for grabs, Bernie, or will you...? Eventually, the collection will probably all go because I can't move it to where I'm going to relocate. I'd like to sell it to someone that will appreciate it as much as I do. Pull some things out that interest us, and away we go. For somebody that wants to, to move as much merchandise as possible, the best way to approach this kind of a pick is to group the merchandise together and try and work on one lump sum. Hopefully the lump is enough to, to close the deal. The seltzer bottle, it's the Lethbridge Brewery. Brewery. Yeah. Hey, Scott, this looks like my last year of high school. Yeah, exactly. Right down to <laughs> right that down guy. To Uncle Ben's, yeah. <laughs> Do you have any idea where any of this stuff came from? Um, most of the bottles were dug up from underground, either in Lil and Pasper. Yeah, Lil don't exist no more. Yeah, it doesn't exist. It was an old mining town. The mine closed down. The mining company sold off the homes. In fact, Bernie's home is a former house that was moved off site. A lot of this stuff was left underground, and my father and my uncle dug it up. They right. were treasure hunters. They used to go out on weekends and stuff with their little backpacks and their shovels and their picks. There are several ghost towns in this area, former uh, mine sites, and as a collection of ghost towns, it's very unique, and uh, I'm sensing that we're going to find a little bit from each one. It looks like a canteen can to me. Canteens yeah. for the miners. That's a good old one. Canteens are, are kind of interesting because they're usually uh, not a mass-produced item. They're hand-tankered. They're pretty unique. They oh, sure yeah, show their age. Lit. This was dug up, I think, because yeah, I think the fused, top's actually fused. Fused right on there. On there. Yeah. There are people that... That, that will decorate their house. Yes. And they'll just put old beat up stuff yeah. like that. Are those candles? Those are bocce balls. Oh, bocce balls. Like an old, old bocce yeah. ball. From the old country. Yeah. Wow. Did I go with my cowboy hat? I think you need those on the road, Scott. This is a good money helmet. Do you know whose hat this was? That was probably uh, a great uncle's. Yeah. Let's see if that works for you. I can put a little light on it for the next pick. Well, we can always fall back on mining. Because <laughs> this picking thing sometimes is more difficult than you think. <laughs> this is my other room. I love the photos. Lots of photos. There's a photograph of Frank's slide before it fell there. Oh, here's Turtle Mountain before the slide.
part with that? No. I'm hanging on to that. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Can't say I blame you, Bernie. You don't see too many photos of that mountain when it's in one piece. She had a couple photos we would have liked to have, but she wasn't giving them up. Yeah. Is it a sentimental thing, or is it a question of you'd have to get the right price for no, it? No, it's really, really rare. Like, I haven't seen it anywhere around the Crow's Nest Pass, a picture of the Frank slide before it fell. What about the picture of your grandfather? Is that a keeper? Yeah. You? And when you, you see something good, you got to ask, yeah. right? What about this mine here? That was the Mohawk Tipple. The Mohawk Tipple? Yeah, that's the one my uncle worked at, my grandfather worked at. Would you part with that one? Yeah, I have a lot of those. OK, good. It looks like these are dog tags. Yeah, they're dog tags yeah. from the miners. So miners. Oh, they're miners tags. Tags. So when they went in, if they found the bodies and that, they know who was in it. Right. Sadly, this area has a history of mining disasters. Yeah. If they used in the mine, they stick it in the walls of the yeah. mine. Oh, right. Can I add that to the? Yeah. You can add that. All right. I love all the pieces of local history. Bernie, what about these old ginger beer bottles? Are they? Yeah, they're up for grabs. This one, you can tell this one's being dug up, right? Yeah. Well, the ginger beer bottles were around early part of the 20th century, and essentially that's what people drank. The interesting part is, because this is a railway town, you're going to find them dug up because people used to ride on the railway. They'd drink their ginger beer bottle at about a half mile out of town. They'd pitch it out the railway car. So you usually find them all in the same place. I think we might have to do something unusual, and that's maybe sell things as a grouping sell the story. So now this is interesting because the color's great. That's a beauty. The longer a bottle stays in the sun, if it's got some manganese or some metal in it, it will turn color. There's one. Boring, horrible yeah. sealer, but, but it's the turning purple, color so it's is nice. beautiful, it's a gem. Because they were turning color, somebody Gems. will want those because you can sit them up in a window, the light comes through them, and they look beautiful. Do you know what they're doing now with these things? They're taking regular glass, running it through an MRI, and it turns it purple. Really? That's yeah. Crazy. Huh. But this one would be flint in the glass. Oh, there's no question yeah. that that. Mother Nature did this one. Oh, there's the beaver sealer. That's not a bad one. As we all know, the mm. beaver sealers, they used them to, to pickle products. Right? right. Those beaver sealers are sort of an iconic Canadian sealer. They're all over the place, mm -hmm. and there's millions of them. And most of them are worth very little, but some of them are worth more, and the beaver ones are worth more mm -hmm. because I got the image of the beaver on it. Right. I just wish she had the one that went the other way. Yeah, that makes a big difference to some collectors, uh, which which way the beaver's facing, and sure enough, the beavers that we found, they're facing the wrong direction. It's always the other way, right? It's always the other way. <laughs> yeah. No matter which one I find, it's always the wrong one. Now let's check out that other shed sure. over there. Wow. Hey, watch yourself, Scotty. Bernie, there's two of these. Would you part with them? Sure. Their eyes light up when they found a treasure. It was like a little kid in a toy store. Scott, look at this. I used to play with this exact same. Hey, this is my glove. I got a little connection to the Lethbridge Brewing and Malting Company. I'm sure that's because you drank so much when you were a kid. Do you have Prince Albert in a can? Well, if you do, you better let him out. <laughs> <laughs> you love a good graphic, don't you? I do. Whew. Something smells. Yeah. Well, that's picking, Scott. You use all okay. your senses, right? What's the life expectancy of a picker? <laughs> it depends if you're picking with me or not. Hey, Scott, I found the ultimate cigar box for you. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure if you were talking about personality yeah. or. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Handmade from long fillers. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a keeper. Bernie, I noticed a couple of buffalo skulls. Hopefully there's no black widows inside these things. <laughs> those were two nice buffalo skulls, and Bernie told us they'd be dug up in the Crow's Nest River not far from here. This part of Alberta, the buffalo migrations uh, used to go right through here, and so it's not unusual to find bones and skulls, but these two were both intact. They showed their age. They were weathered. I think my bison's older than yours, Scott. They used to be plentiful, and now they're scarce, and there's a little bit of market value to them. So, Bernie, I think uh, Scott and I should probably uh, compare notes and sure. come up with uh, some leave. sort of offer for you. OK, yeah, sounds okay. good. Thanks, Bernie. Please don't leave you guys talk. I'm a little concerned about this pick because there's a lot of stuff in here that I wouldn't normally take. But she's a nice lady, and I don't really want to take a beating on this stuff. I would have normally picked five or six items out and left the rest. 
but we were trying to put a package deal together because we knew Bernie wanted to move a lot of stuff, and we would get a better deal if we took more stuff. Well, I think what we should do is this. I'm going to go up there. I'm going to give my scan of it. I'm going to sort of price it up in my head. Hey, I'll do, do the, the same. I'll do the same. Then we'll we'll take a couple of minutes, talk about it, see how close we are, and if, if our numbers are close, we'll go in and try and do the deal. Okay? Yeah. My way of doing it is a little different than Sheldon's. Is I look and, and I pick the five or six or ten best things that I see that I can sell at retail, and if that gets me my money back, the rest is the profit. I'm thinking about what I would allow for each piece. I'm not going to get hurt on each piece and uh, add it up in my mind. And then I usually round it off to the upside, and then we start negotiating from there. Quick sell. Yeah. They're not going to make a lot of money off them, but they're a quick sell. Nothing is really valuable, but priced right should be able to turn it over quickly. So now that we've scoped it out, what's your price? Now you go first. I don't want to go first, because I'm always lower than you. No, you go first. Go on. Okay, well, 325 is my number. Oh, I was going to say 350. Huh. It was generous enough that uh, we weren't insulting Bernie. There's some real treasures in here, and then there's, you know, a few bits and pieces that uh, probably don't have a lot of value, no. but they're just, they're dangerous. Interest. Yeah. We came up with a, with a number that worked for both of us, mm -hmm. and the number was $325 for this bundle here. How, how does that sound for you? That sounds good. How about 350 Oh, <laughs> See, that was a mistake we made. We didn't start low. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think actually that sounds very fair. Absolutely. OK. Yeah. OK, great. great. It's a deal. OK, Got thanks, ourselves Bernie. a deal. Thanks. And there's probably another three or $400 in there, but it's going to take us a long time to make that. Uh, you got to double your money just to pay for the gas bill and uh, make it make sense. Bernie? Been a it's pleasure. been a pleasure. It was great. <laughs> you take care. You too. I love being here. I love meeting Bernie. Just a lovely person. And you know what? We got some things that we can make some money on. It was a really good day. I'm glad they came. It was nice to see someone appreciate the stuff as much as me. It's been a great day because it's been a long time since I've been in Southern Alberta. That was really good. Just the history of it, you know, the, the museum and the chicken coop, all those little ghost towns and bottles. We could hit a pick like that right across Canada. That'd be a lot of fun. We may be historians by the end of it. <laughs> Before we get some gas, I'm going to give Jerry a call to see if he can tell us anything about that Dempster windmill weight. Three and a half? Three and a half done. Jerry Frost is a guy that I've known for years. He's probably the most experienced dealer in Alberta on country store collectibles. And I knew he'd be able to find out exactly what it was worth so that we can find out whether we made any money on it or not. What do you think? I think it's wonderful. I, I haven't seen one. That's complete like that. I've only ever seen the horse, but I've never seen the, the bottom part ever on one. I think it's great. And this one, fortunately, the guy was a bad shot. He never got the horse. The world always makes things interesting as long as they don't uh, take away from them. How it looks. When you get into a place like cowboy country, that stuff's way more popular. Now, the, here's the magic question. What's it worth? What's it worth? I, I have the feeling, um, looking at that, I, I figure six, 650 anyway, Scott, and possibly more you know, in, the, in the right area. Thanks a lot for your help. Bye. Hey, well, that's all right. <laughs> it was rare, it was desirable, and he even sounded like he might want it. <laughs> Overall, I quite enjoyed that. This bad life is incredible. Holy oh, smokes, it's a three seater. <laughs> How much would it take for you to lose your marble? Yeah! Tell me what you'd want for everything. $75,000. Oh! Step back in time. I love it. The strategy was go for the throat. You guys want to move the suicide shit? Watch yourself here, Sean. Oh, I want that. Please! I don't think so. I'm Scott Cousins. I'm Sheldon Smithen. And we're pickers. Travel all over Canada, coast to coast, from the West Rocky Mountains to the Eastern Shores, and all the back roads in between, looking for hidden gems in people's basements, attics, and bars. Sometimes we take a gamble, trust in our gut to make a buck. Just like the people we meet, every story is different. 
not junk to us. It's a beautiful morning. We've got a pick to be had straight north of Calgary and Wetaskiwin. I'm looking forward to meeting Stan Reynolds. I am, wow. Okay. He's been around for a long time in this part of the province. Stan Reynolds has been a legend in this part for a bunch of years. He's been a big collector of automobilia, pretty much anything that moves, airplanes, military, and he's got a great museum. I heard that he's having a bit of a fire sale on some stuff because he's so prop and he's got to move, so oh, that could be good. Hey, look at the sign. Well, there goes Stan this Reynolds. This the place. Wow. Look at this place. That's unbelievable. Look at the old buildings. Looks like he's got some old outbuildings that he's had transported. It's like airport hangar. Yeah, really. Radar deck site. Let's go meet Mr. Reynolds. Stan, how are you? Well, I'm still alive. <laughs> Good to meet you. Scott Cousins. Stan Reynolds had an antique store for years and years in Wetaskiwin. I started collecting in about 1948. And the rest is history. Stan's son wanted to clear the property. They allowed the museum to come through and take anything they needed, and everything else was up for grabs and priced. Okay, so you guys want to go? Yeah, we better go there. check it out. We met Mark, who's essentially his right-hand man. He asked if Mark could walk us around and gave Mark the authority to deal on anything we wanted to buy. Well, look at the car, Sheldon. It's like a graveyard of cars. Don't get started now. I got to take a quick look at that. Yeah, Stan's a self-made man, and he was a Royal Canadian Air Force pilot during the war. And after the war, when he'd fly over this area, he'd spot carcasses. It might be old farm implements, it might be automobiles, things that he went and salvaged and turned that into just a major collection. Brilliant when you think about it. Yeah, although, holy smokes. See, that's what I want. Got the great fin on the back of it. Hey, can Gotta I get in there and take some hood ornaments off those? I don't think so. No? When you make them into an ornament that's on a wood block or something, I've sold those for good money. Looks like it's an Indian head. Oh, I want that. Please? You can buy the whole car. Probably around 200 How about 10 bucks for the car? I'll take the ornament and leave the rest. 10 bucks for the car, 190 for the ornament. Ah, <laughs> you're killing me. I love when Scott gets into a pick. John, look at this. This is hilarious. Oh, like isn't that beautiful? Door. I sort of feed off of him. Now, I have to say, I've never seen a conquistador <laughs> put <laughs> ornament. I think if I could figure out enough of these, we might have to make an offer on the cars and just take the hood ornaments and leave the rest. Oh, no. Man, I love these hood ornaments. I guess we better go back in the direction we were going. This is incredible, though, isn't it? Well, it's an awful big shed. There must be some stuff in there. Oh, well, a couple things. Yeah? Here it is. Wow. Yeah, I think I'll take a walk down here now, all right? Yep, and I'll cover the next aisle. It was interesting when I started looking in the cases. Two things struck me. One, that there were some pretty interesting things, but the prices were outrageously high. Boy, even I'm shocked at that price. <laughs> and if you were shocked at that one, you're going to be shocked at this one, too. And two, there were a lot of empty spaces. I get that feeling that we're not the first person in here. Not even the fifth person in here. We were about the 15,000th people through there. Yeah, lots of things have been sold out of here. Yeah. You see, you've got some hood ornaments. The ones I'm looking for are the old Pontiac ones with the Indian heads on them. They went fast here. These wrenches here, I'm looking for ones that have Harley Davidson or Indian or No, those Case. would have already been sold. OK. Yeah. Anything that wasn't outrageously priced had been sold. The spear, it looks like it's got some age to it. We were looking at the leftovers, and I could see why a lot of them were leftovers. It's got 165. I don't, you know, I mean, it's a neat thing. It's an interesting thing, but. They had goofy prices on them. I could see us getting 75 mm -hmm. out of that. Which means we offer 25. Well, or maybe 30. Like, I'd have to have more than that. There's been a lot of people through here, and it's still here. We're here to buy if you okay. want to sell. It, it's getting older as, as it goes, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'll be dead before it sells. 
What we're going to do, I think, on some of these things that we still think you're too high on is we're going to put a package together, and then maybe we're going to try and do a bulk deal at the end oh, okay. with some of them, OK? All right. I'm not interested in any of this stuff at the prices that you've got on them. Buttons, military cap badges, all priced between $7.50 and $20 an item. But if you were to give me a blow me out lot price on all of them, so cheap I can't refuse it, I might not refuse it. Like a uh, dollar a piece? There had to be a thousand dollars worth of stuff at his prices. 40 bucks for all of them. Yeah, we could do that. Okay, perfect, good. I'm feeling better now. <laughs> Once I made the deal on all those pins and cap badges and buttons, I was feeling pretty good. Is that a powder horn? Well, it could be. The strategy home. was uh, go for the throat, quite frankly. Would you say 60 for the two of them? Yep, that I can do. What about these two powder horns? Could we say 60 on these two? I could do 60 on those two. Done. Yep. This old saddle maker's tree, what would you need for that? Oh, 30 bucks. I'm happy to say I was vicious. 30 bucks is fair. Let's, let's say sold. OK. All right, perfect. It seems like you got quantity on these scrapers. That's what that is, isn't it, Sheldon? The hide scraper? Exactly. Yeah. Sort of thing I'd say 15 bucks on. Yeah. I'd have to go 30, though. No, I can't do that. Oh, another one of those scrapers right there. That looks to me like a better scraper. That one I'd take a stab at 15. Oh, you stabbed me all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to be really g generous, Scott, I would say 50 for the two. I don't want to be really generous. <laughs> I want to make money. I can't do that much. For both of them, 80 bucks. Is that your best, best price, That's, or is that your? That is that just is your, the absolute best price that you could ever get. And is that your best price if we package them together with the other one over there? Oh, the other one. Yeah. His prices were way too high on all of them. I'll put them with the other ones. OK. And I know we're coming back to look at those before the day, and we're going to put a real stink bit on them. Oh, I don't know. A stink bit is you take the lowest possible amount that you think would be reasonable, and then you half it. That's a stink bit. <laughs> so you guys want to go to the suicide shed? <laughs> Who wouldn't? Not, sounds like our kind of place. Go ahead. Are oh, you first, Scott? <laughs> really? I'm not sure. <laughs> I insist. Just a second here. Oh, cow. Watch yourself here, Shell. Oh, yeah. I'm scared to touch anything because it could all come down on us. What a pile of rusty old stuff. Ah, the smell of oxidizing iron. I got a feeling from Mark that he would be very generous. That's not a bad one, right? It was becoming more evident that this stuff was either going to sell to somebody. This is a nice one there. Or if it was metal, it was going to go to scrap iron. What are we talking, a bucket throw on these? Well, it was sort of like five bucks. What if we took 10? Could you say a bucket throw at 10? 10 How about sauce. 20 bucks for 10? 15 bucks is our final offer. OK, you twisted my arm. OK. What about these ridiculously big ice picks? Would you go a <laughs> bucket throw on a few of these things, too? Yeah, I could. OK, I'm going to haul these out of here before we kill ourselves. Thanks, Mark. I was getting really mercenary at that point. I saw some branding irons. What are we talking, a bucket throw on these? OK. We took them all, 59 branding irons in a bucket throw. Look at the construction of this shell. And we'll move them quick to a dealer for about 300 bucks. That was the best deal of the day. Do you have, like, a, about a gallon of our salt? What do you want to wash? <laughs> Your hands? <laughs> yeah. And then at the very end, those three Indian stone pieces, the spear, and I put a real stink bit. 100 bucks for all of them? Yep, that I can do. And he took it. Fun, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so I think he had about 600 priced on those. I know we're going to make money on those pins and cap badges because I counted at least 30 cap badges we can get two bucks a piece for, and everything else is profit, profit, profit.
It was tough picking, but just meeting Stan was worthwhile. He's a legend around here. Well, you take care of yourself, and we'll come back and visit you again. OK, thanks. To follow in a bunch of other pickers and then still bird dog a few good things, well, that's what we do best. And so we drove away with a few dollars in our jeans, even after the dry cleaning bills. <laughs> well, we got down. We got dirty. Stan was an interesting fellow, wasn't he? Oh, yeah, he's an institution. Wow. I tell you, I bet you if you sat down with him over a few beers, you'd hear some stories. Yeah. Looks like we're on fumes. I we're... see that little flashing gas tank sign there. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah. <laughs> we'll sit down and have a quick talk, yeah. You get the coffee? Well, Sheldon, we got a few picks and a lot of miles. Let's see where we're going. It's north, up here in Lamont. That's, That's the hall. Yeah, exactly. We got some serious mileage to put on. In fact, I think I should probably grab the wheel. I don't feel good about that. <laughs> After you. <laughs> Nice work there, Scott. Thanks a lot for that. You remind me of a guy that you go out for dinner with that goes to the bathroom when the bill comes. <laughs> Do you see how much it costs to fill this up? Hundred dollars. Yeah. That makes this next pick that much more important that we gotta get some stuff this time. It was a little bit of a drive, but we thought, well, uh, let's take a shot at this one. We heard about Gabe. Shelton found him on the internet. I don't know what he was doing. Such a bore. <laughs> I feel this is going to be an entirely different pick than we did yesterday. Oh yeah, this would be the place. Holy smokes! I can see stuff in the field already. It looks like stuff everywhere. Yeah, he's got stuff. There's an old oh, yeah. building filled with crap. Looks like our kind of guy. Well, hopefully, I can find a nice motorcycle here. It was kind of intriguing. It's a little weird because there's like a snowmobile graveyard there. Possum Electric, there you go. <laughs> we didn't know what we were walking into. You pouted, buddy. You're taking the credit or the blame. Hey, Dave. I'm Sheldon. Hi. Sheldon? Yeah. Scott. Scott? Nice yeah. to meet you. Nice to meet you. you. You have a lot of stuff. Everything and anything. <laughs> when did you start collecting, Dave? Um, 20 years ago when I moved here. Hey, everybody around here must know that you're the parts guy. Oh, well, no, I keep it quiet so nobody was bugging me all the time. <laughs> Yeah, see, you've got a bunch of trains. All kinds of stuff. Dave had collections of collections. And there's some really nice cameras up there. Looking around, you never know if you see that one treasure. Yeah, I'm more looking for the late 60s, early 70s stuff, or punk, which would be in the 80s. Now, they're all too old for me. And that's Barbie dolls. <laughs> That it is. I'm not a big Barbie collector, but if I can find something right around the 1960 period, then I'll take a look at it. If it's any later than that, I'm not really interested. Oh, G.I. Joe's, I'll look at as many as you got. My poor G.I. Joe got burnt. <laughs> Dave's a real character. I'll play a note. Oh. <laughs> she works. Unlike some collectors, he brings it out and he's proud of it. Perfect mating of a man and machine. <laughs> <laughs> That's the original advertisements for the Harley Davidsons. I got them out of popular mechanics books. From my perspective, Dave was more of an accumulator than a collector. Oh, Dave. Yeah, there's lots of stuff in here, Way huh? Way more stuff. Hmm. As I scanned the room, I saw there was a couple things that if we could get them for the right price, that we could make some money. I see you got a CNR lantern. Oh, they're pretty expensive, those babies. <laughs> pretty expensive is a relative term. Yeah. Okay, well then I would rather not sell them. <laughs> Dave's tough to do business with. I think there's a little chip on the bottom in one spot. That can make a big difference. Yes. What would well, you want? $125. Yeah, I think I don't think we can make any money off that. I think we thought it was gonna be better than it was. There's horse hair in there. Yeah. I took it apart one day and had a look at it. What would you want for that one, Dave? Uh, I got to get 50 bucks out of that old bugger. A little too rich to turn over, I think, at a profit. All right. If it's any good, he wants too much for it. Head her on through. All right. There were a few interesting things in one little display cabinet. You can see you've got some Inuit pieces here. Yeah, this is stuff that I got when I worked in Alaska. You could go into a store up there and just buy it from the uh, native Eskimos who made it. That's incredible. 
Okay, well that's called baleen, and it comes from the mouth of the whale. What would you say that ship is? It almost looks non-North American, doesn't exactly. it? Exactly. Now, is that a set of sealskin mitts back there or something? Yeah. I and mean, this wow. is a real part of Northern Canadian history, though, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And they're lined with rabbit. It's a great little collection, though. Tell me what you'd want for everything. $75,000. Whoa! Holy cow. Now, what's the one that's worth all the money? The baleen boats. Oh, OK. They're twenty-five dollars and $35,000 each. I'm not sure where he got the impression that all of a sudden the baleen boats were super valuable. And unless those things were filled with diamonds, they weren't worth the price he was asking. $25,000 and $35,000 each. each. Whoa. Or I'm not selling them. After Dave said that he wanted $75,000 for the entire grouping, I thought I'd maybe come back, would he consider 20? <laughs> But I was scared that uh, Scott might have a heart attack and <laughs> Dave would say, okay, sold. I'm not touching them. I'm yeah. staying away. Uh, well, I think you better put those back. Why don't we take it? Because I'm scared now. We continued looking at more collections of collections. Chainsaws, boat motors, really, really old buggers, Sam, <laughs> too. There you go, Sheldon. I'm the black knight, you're the yeah. white knight. <laughs> <laughs> Dueling saws. I don't think I was uh, really all that interested in buying a chainsaw. And uh, it certainly took more of a man to handle that thing than I could ever do. This whole era of Honda was when they were trying to distinguish themselves from the Harley Davidson bad yeah. boys, you mm -hmm. know? It's... I'm making this one for my mom. <laughs> <laughs> he just wasn't selling things that I was interested in. Yeah, look at this, Sheldon. Look at the way when you turn it this way, it looks like almost like a rocket. Once we're there, we're there. And we got to buy something to make it work. Wow. Do you have any old motorcycle license plates? Yeah, right here. The yellow ones are newer. What would you want for the license plates? I'll make you an offer on all of them. I don't know. I could do 15 bucks for the works. I'd say they're gone. Done. Done deal. We finally broke the ice. We finally made a buy. Let's see where it goes from there. Whoa, look at that. Whoops. Holy smokes, it's a three-seater. <laughs> I don't want to rain on anybody's parade, especially Dave's and, in particular, Scott's. Yeah! There's nothing there for me. Whoa, there's my hat. And look at the look of it, eh? Oh, yeah. Hey, here, I'll give you a push. <laughs> at this point, I'm thinking, how do we cut our losses here? That chain seized up. <laughs> Say goodbye to Dave and, and tell him it's been a great afternoon, but uh, on to the next pick. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. I figured the only way we're going to salvage this pick is if I can buy a motorcycle off of him that we can make three or four hundred dollars on. Do you have any running motorcycles? Yeah. Well, here they are, guys. Oh, geez, yeah, you got a bunch of them. Yeah. yeah. I walk in the shed and I see some interesting motorcycles. And I spot one that looks like it's in reasonably good nick. The Honda's the only one that doesn't look like it needs a bunch of work. OK, well, let's bring her out and fire up for you guys. I'm getting excited about that bike because I'm thinking if that thing runs, that's something we can sell. Oh, well, there you go. Sounded pretty good. The engine seemed tight on it. I think I'm going to take her for a test drive. There you go. And it's one down and four up. That transmission's tight. Yep, not very many miles on it. She'd make her back all right. Hey, if Scott don't come back, you want to go pick him? Sure. Perfect. I can see him going off from the horizon. We might not see him again. <laughs> it ran pretty good. It had decent power for a little Honda 100. Any young kid can learn how to ride on it. And I do motorcycle swap meets, and those bikes sell all the time. I was going to do a wheelie, but it's been a while since I've done one of those. <laughs> Look at the smile on his face. <laughs> I'll tell you, I haven't had that much fun this pick. That's great. I was quite happy with that. OK, why don't we shut her down and let's talk turkey on it. What do you want for this? Well, I'd like to get 500 out of it with all the work I put into it. I think the max retail on that bike's going to be six to $800. And I, I'm probably going to have to clean it up a little bit to get that kind of price on it. I know Sheldon. He, Sheldon's looking at it because he's thinking he doesn't want it because we're going to have to put it in the back of the truck. I'll tell you what I'm thinking, and I'm not trying to insult you, but 
I'm going to be reselling this, so I'm looking at the 175 2 range on it. Well, it'd come down to 100 bucks for you. I'm thinking, is there anything else I can throw into the deal to get the price down? I'm going to just take a quick look in the back room. There's this little bike. I just want to take a look at it. I'm just going to take it out in the sun. So I saw this little banana seat bike, not in real good condition, but it had a good look to it. That's a cute little guy, isn't he? Perfect for the kids to learn. It's a little more my speed, Scott. Yeah. <laughs> so I figured I'll see if we can maybe do a package deal on that. I'll tell you what, I'm prepared to go for this and the little bike 270 final offer. Well, I guess I could go for that. That'd be reasonable. OK, let's go sign her up. Get my bill. Get the bill sale. OK. And uh, we'll get some cash for you. All right. That would look like fun. <laughs> that was a riot. <laughs> I was happy because on some things, he was just out into the moon, and other things he was really reasonable on. Because I do motorcycle swap meets, and guys are always looking for a nice period license plate to put on their bike. Okay, Sheldon, watch out. There you go. Okay, I think we got her, buddy. All right, that's it for us then, I guess, eh? Yeah. Dave? Thanks a lot for Great coming, guys. You. It was a lot of fun. Oh, you guys okay. have a good one? Yeah. yeah. Take her easy. Okay. Yep. Holy smokes, just the massive amount of stuff. I have some fun getting on that bike. I drive it home and say, yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't see me for months. <laughs> well, I'm going to pick up the speed driving home, so maybe you want to put the helmet on in the truck here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So I see you've sold the place. Yes, sir. It's just time to downsize. And I'm trying to get my wife to convince herself that she will retire, and then we can take our big holiday trailer and go see some more of this country. Well, so where should we start? Well, we've got some pieces in the house. Yeah, Jim had a house. Welcome to my humble abode. And then several outbuildings, a couple of Quonsets, and there were things inside and out. The more somebody has, the more likely we are we're going to hit a winner. In this room here, we have a kind of a hockey sock full of different things. I saw the toy truck, and I knew it was a Lincoln toy truck. That little truck my wife has had for so many years. Actually, she was kind of reminiscing the other day about driving it around on the farm when she was in the sandbox and stuff as a little kid. And I knew then I wasn't getting it for 10 bucks. Lincoln trucks are one of the toys I have sold a lot of, and there's a lot of people looking for Lincoln toys. So does that have some emotional attachment to her? Not necessarily. The guy said something like, well, would you take 50 bucks for it? And his eyes lit up when I said that, so I knew there was a deal to be made. I think that will work. Yeah, perfect. I figured that toy, we paid 50 for it. I think it's a pretty easy 100 and a quarter, maybe a bit more than that. There's some photos over here, Jim. These pictures do have some history. Wow, what a great looking bunch of guys. I want that guy's hat. <laughs> Old photos are very marketable. My grandfather was one of the carpentry foremen on Toronto Maple Leaf Gardens. Wow. Oh, that's a Toronto picture, too. Yes, they all are. So it's got to be something with a little bit of pizzazz to it. This was showing how the men used to have to put telephone poles up. Wow. With what they called them pike poles, I believe. That set of three, I thought, had some real kick to it. I don't know. I think, realistically, 50 bucks 50 for the bucks three. 50 bucks for the three? Yeah, I was thinking the same. You guys, what, are you connected at the hip or what? Yeah. <laughs> he flips the puck over to me, and I put it in the net. So is that good for you? It works. OK. Yeah. All right, thanks. We'll put these over here with the truck. OK. When we're on a pick, we'll buy anything we can make a buck on. There was a soapstone carving. What would you want for him? Cash. <laughs> cash it is. How much cash? 
Inuit carvings are a hit and miss proposition because the big money comes when you can identify them to particular artists. I'm a picker, so I'd like to pay at very, very little. <laughs> I understand that. 20 bucks. 20 bucks, you know what? That was a number that was in my head, so I'm not going to negotiate on that. The I wheels. Like it. I like it. The wheels are rolling. Yes, okay. they are. There's great yes, things everywhere I look. Well, that table there is a library table. Yeah. And you got a cream separator on here. They're quite decorative items, and it was pristine. Well, this is a nice size. You bet. What yeah. would you need out of that one? We haven't got out of the house yet, so I'll leave the ball in your court on this one. Well, I hope Jim doesn't show us the door, but 60 bucks. 75. I love the art of negotiation. I really, really do. Are you carrying it? Do I look silly? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's a toughie, eh? This is the way I like to deal. Just because you go into the bay and say they want $100 for that shirt doesn't mean I'm going to pay it. Some this guy's done this before, <laughs> hasn't he? <laughs> we thought, you know what? Let's see if we can package that with the desk. Interested in selling the desk? I do believe. Well, it's a classic arts and crafts piece. <laughs> it was in nice, original condition. I've handled lots and lots of these. Right. So to me, that's another sort of $100 purchase if you're interested. Because why don't we just do 200 on the pair? Yeah, then we're paying we're more paying than we want on the separator and more than we want on the desk. <laughs> but you're a good negotiator. You give him the benefit on the 100, I give you the benefit on the 75. My only question is this. If you read in the paper tomorrow morning that there was an A-bomb went off here. And that'll be your wife? Could you please come to my memorial service? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, let's make it happen. OK, let's good. 175 Excellent. for the pair. On the two. Yeah. yeah. Done. Yeah. We were trying to grease them up so that we could get something else out of them at a better price later. Jim, I saw something here, and I'm wondering if it's something you'd be prepared to sell. This lovely cowboy hat. It might even fit me. That's a Biltmore. That is that's a Biltmore. You know what? That's a Calgary made hat. Yeah. Self-styled by yours truly. Jim shapes his own cowboy hats, and he shapes them just the way I like them. So what would you need out of a hat like that? We got to start at at least one. One what? <laughs> I'd like to pay 40 bucks for it. <sighs> Put it back down there. But if you want to add another 20 to that. You are a hard burger. Does this look good enough for me, basic? If you like it, uh, you can't get too hurt on it. It matches your, your uh, canvas okay. jacket. You got a deal, 60 bucks. You got it. Very nice hat. Looks good on you, my man. Yeah, the ball was rolling. We were finding our groove. Now, before you make too many inquiries, I will suggest to you that what you do see in here is 17 years of an auction sale junkie. <laughs> That's me. I'm scared now. Can I just dig around over there? Certainly me. When I walked into the Quonset hut, I thought to myself, not going to be anything in there. But, nope, you got some dead animals over here. Oh, a spoon collection. <laughs> <laughs> Less than desirable collectibles. Oh, that's nasty. That is bad, isn't it? In the back, I could see some trunks and things. And you turn around towards the door. And these branding irons, would you part with them? I'm going to keep one B, one X, and one half diamond. The others are for sale. One B and one S. Scott and I both have a soft spot for branding irons. That leaves four odd branding irons. A lot of farmers will buy branding irons, and they will screw them to the outside of their sheds as decorative items. Looks like either an odd S or an odd Z. If you can get it one from an important ranch, that can be a really good branding iron. I think we need to do a bulk buy on those ones. Six irons, what do you say? 90 bucks, 15 bucks an iron? Yeah. Done. The interesting thing is, even at that price, he hesitated. And, and I'm thinking, we're paying you more than they're worth, and you're hesitating. I felt very good about it. Ah. How many times do you see a bag of marbles and they're all landfill, right? Yeah. And look at this. Oh, one, yeah, one, two. And for sure, two turn of the century marbles. Good hunting. Where were you in this I box? I was just here? in this box. Let's see if there's any. Okay. Keep, ooh, ooh, ooh. Keep digging, Scott. More marbles. At the turn of the century, they had marbles that they actually blew from glass. 
The way you can tell the difference is because the Ponto, and it looks to me like we've got a bunch of good ones in here. Most of them had inner cores that make them even more desirable. For me, that's what makes antiques interesting. You know, a lot of the products that we take for granted today were made with quality in mind. They've stood the test of time, everything down to that little tiny glass marble. You probably won't have to pay a lot for them. I don't know, you're dealing with Jim. What are you guys doing rooting around in my shed here? <laughs> <laughs> how much would it take for you to lose your marbles? Actually, what I prefer to find out is how much it's going to cost me to get them back. <laughs> <laughs> Normally when you get a couple bags of marbles like that, you can hold them up and get them for five bucks. But Jim was tough. I really don't know. Talk to me. Oh, uh, well, here's the problem. When you ask me that question, well, I have to tell you the truth. Jim wouldn't set a price on anything. He made us tell him what we would pay. These ones are, for the most part, landfill. But there's a few in here that are good. They're good because these are turn of the century marbles. I would give you 40 bucks for the marbles. Sold. I made him, I think, a pretty fair offer, because I can tell you, he would have put those in a garage shelf for like five bucks, and that's what he would have got for them. Wow. You know, I've got this thing about cowboy hats. Up hanging on a set of antlers, I saw another cowboy hat. Seems to be the same size as my head. Every once in a while, we're buying for ourselves. That's not too bad, is it? You look no. cool, my man. You look really cool. Now, this is a bit of a beater. It's got a little wear inside there. Yeah, it does. <laughs> but that's called experience. I hope you're going to treat me a little bit kinder on this one. Just to show you that my heart's in the right place, we're going 6-0 on the brown one. We'll round it out to an even, nice little 1-0-0 bill, and you own the pair of them. You know, Jim, this is way more than I would ever pay for a hat this bad, but I got to have it. So we got a deal. I love it. So the plan comes together. OK. Yeah, but you got to have the two good hats together. There you go. See, I told you the top is most comfortable, right? Yeah. Ha-ha. <laughs> now you're coming. Yeah. Jim, it was a pleasure. My man, I'll tell you what, it was a good time. We got a, a lot time. of good stuff, and we had a lot of fun. You're going to have to teach him how to wear hats, sir. Yeah. That's yeah. a plus. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> See, I'm getting back in the truck before I lose my hat. Happy trails. See you later. See you guys. Hey, well, that was one fun pick. You know, that made the day. I wasn't sure what we were going to find there, but wow, we filled the truck at least. <laughs>fun negotiating with him because he had it in his mind that he was going to be a little tough and, and he was and he didn't take any bull on anything. <laughs>
Howdy, fellas. Hey. Hey. How are we doing? Come Great place you got here. Oh, thanks. I heard the bar was for sale, though. Yeah, I've been at it for 27 years, and it's time to semi-retire. Whoa. That I love. Well, it's really interesting, isn't it? The saloon was built in 1913. It's fabulous. Yeah. This was a coal mining town, gotten a lot of history from old timers that used to live here. There's some artifacts from the mines and the houses that were here back when the place was booming. By the middle 50s, all the mines in Wayne were closed. Everywhere I look, there's fantastic stuff. I collected uh, a lot of the stuff from when I was a kid, not knowing that, you know, it would become my favorite things later on in life. What's the story on the photo of Wayne? Well, that photo was from the early 20s. We had over 2,500 people. We had stores, banks, booming. They circa 1900 strip mall. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Is that photo something that you'd let go? I'm sure a 1,000 people have asked him if you'd sell it before. Uh, probably not. That was a gift from an old friend of mine, actually. All the good things are gifts. All the good things are gifts, yeah. This whole band box in the corner here, my friend Ted Carter, when he gave it to me, it came out of the old bus depot in Calgary. I'll get her fired up. That's really interesting. Oh, here we go. Wow. The lights are on and everything. Yeehaw! Fantastic, eh? Beautiful. I can see that in my house. Have you ever had any good offers on it? Ten grand on that. Wow. Yeah. Ted wanted it somewhere where basically the whole world could see it. And that would be here at the Last Chance Saloon. We're kind of a crossroads to the world. <laughs> we wanted to own a piece of that, but it wasn't gonna happen. What about the boar's head? A uh, fella hunted him with a bow in northern Alberta. Seriously? Yeah. Had his stuff brought home to his wife, and his wife said, not in my house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> could that be up for sale? It could be, yeah. What would you want for that? Well, good question. If I did sell it, you know, I'd probably have to maybe talk to the owner. I know he'd give it to me, but he might have fallen in love with it since then. <laughs> <laughs> maybe his wife has, too, maybe, right? He yeah. wants it back. <laughs> the carrot is dangled, and then it's snatched away. That's really tough for a picker. I found a stereoscope and some cards. Is that something that you might be interested in parting with? I think we could. Before moving pictures, that was a way to get you into places that you'd never seen before, and in 3D. Well, yep. that's interesting. There's no question about that. The theater of Satan. Now, the stereoscopes themselves are not that hard to find, but the good cards are. What would it take to separate you from the stereoscope and cards? Uh, probably around 225. His prices were through the moon. I think one of the reasons may have been because he wasn't interested in selling it. Niagara Falls. Oh, yeah. People made offers that were ridiculous. And so that's what he thinks the price is. Well, there's a lot of stuff we'd like to buy, but I think you're attached to most of it. I'm attached to a fair bit of it, all right. That's the peril of being a picker. People think they want to sell, and then when push comes to shove, they're just not ready. Well, maybe that's one to leave here, uh, if you don't mind, just aside for a minute. Yeah. What's happening here today is exactly what I feared might happen. That fly cop sign. Looks like it's from sort of the 1930s, maybe, 40s. As far as selling it, somebody wanted to buy it last week. And they what did they offer you? They didn't offer because I, I told them it wasn't for sale. OK, well, is it for sale today? What do you offer? <laughs> Everything I was asking about, he couldn't part with. What do you want? <laughs> Thousand? No, it's not worth a thousand. There we go, then. So he wouldn't part with bull snake on the wall up there. Is that something you would consider moving? Uh, no. <laughs> so he had to talk to somebody about parting with it. The boar's head, do you have to make a call on that? Uh... And then he wouldn't talk to somebody about parting with it. I better hold on to it. Just sorry to say. OK. Yeah. And he wouldn't sell it. <laughs> From time to time, I do sell stuff out of my saloon. The majority of it, I like to keep. Hey, time to make a couple last offers and move along. You got a Coke button in the back room. What are you thinking about that? Oh, it's worth a couple grand. A couple grand? A yeah. couple grand? Come on now, friend. Yeah, and I always laugh when I see people putting huge prices on those things because they think they're rare. Well, every corner store in Canada had at least two of them. This one happened to be all shot up. That would yeah. work out to about, what, four or 500 bucks a hole? 
Fuck that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I buy stuff for myself, a lot of people will give me a bit of a deal on it because it is for me and I'm gonna keep it, not just turn it over. That come from around here too? Uh, I did, yeah. Another gift. When it comes right down to it, we just can't afford to pay for sentimentality. Just before I leave, can I get one of these jalapeno pickled eggs to go, please? Oh, yeah, you gotta try one of them. I love pickled eggs. Hoo-wee, <laughs> smell that, Smells eh? like the prairies, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'll be a buck and a half, please. Thank you very much. Well, it's always good to make a sale, <laughs> regardless. That is beautiful. The best thing about that pick was the pickled eggs. I'm glad they were here and I enjoyed their company. I'm really glad I got to see the Last Chance Saloon. Probably my last chance to see it. <laughs> Wasn't great picking, but there's always another pick and there's not always another pickled egg. <laughs> Scott and I have a pretty good broad knowledge on a lot of things, but certain things we have associates that are experts. Sid's a friend of both of ours. We both respect his opinion. I take a few pictures and email them to Sid last night. Now we're gonna give him a call and find out what he has to say. Hey, Sid, it's Sheldon. Scott sent you some photos. There was that truck. Would you take 50 bucks for it? Did you get a chance to look at it? I did. Nice truck. Do you have a feel for a price, Sid? Oh, excellent. Hey, that's good news. There was three photographs. Realistically, 50 bucks 50 for the bucks three? 50 bucks for the three? Yeah. It works. OK. Yeah. So I'm dying to know what you think they were. As a collection, they might be worth more than individually. But they get $50 to $75. Excellent. Excellent. One will make a buck on. Last but not least, my marbles. What do you think about them? Yeah, that was an interesting group, too. I would give you 40 bucks for the marbles. Give me the good or bad news. You probably can get 10 to 15 dollars a piece for those nicer ones. The, the other one, five to eight dollars each. Hey, fantastic. Yes, excellent again. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Sid. See ya. Yeah, you're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. You do want to drive? I'll drive. I don't like that. I'd like to keep you on edge, yeah. We've made a few bucks, and we're on our way to pick some more, so that's really encouraging. See that fork in the road? Yeah. Take, Take it. it. <laughs> Jamie, 850, what do you say, man? Jamie's looking <laughs> happy to get me in Throw me a bone, and I'm happy. Some of these are worth a lot. I don't like to hear that. Not till I go up the door. Hey, Sheldon. Yo, do we have any use for a $5 green bar? Yeah, five bucks. Steal. I'm not sure if you steal it. Yeah, exactly. I'm Scott Cousins. I'm Sheldon Smithens. We're picking. We travel all over Canada, coast to coast, from the West Rocky Mountains to the Eastern Shores, and all the back roads in between. Looking for hidden gems in people's basements, attics, and bars. Sometimes we take a gamble, trusted our gut to make a buck. Just like the people we meet, every story is different. Not just us. Hamilton, eh? Oh, can't you smell the steel? Did you get to the cash machine? <laughs> you know, as usual, you'll be the bank. <laughs> Want me to drive? No, I don't think so. I got the map. All I can say is it's good to be back in southern Ontario. Haven't been here for a while. Looks like we're going to do a nice big triangle of picking in this part of the country. I'd like to call it the Pickers Golden Horseshoe, as opposed to the Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> <laughs> we're hoping that we can get some screaming deals on some stuff we can take out west and make some money on. We're off to see Gary this morning in Hamilton. I'm always worried when I'm going to somebody's house that it's going to be a show and tell. This guy, as I understand it, is a bit of a collector, and collectors can be real tough to deal with, but we'll see. Right yeah. there it is with the boxes. Yeah, look at all the boxes in front of there. What the heck's in those boxes? You got any money for the move? Oh, yeah. I got a dime. Maybe we should put that in just to make sure it's going to be a good pick. Hey. Hi. Hey. How's it going? 
Wow, we got a lot of stuff here, that's for sure. Stuff, stuff, stuff. I buy and sell stuff to make a living. I've been a voracious garage sailor for 30 plus years. Saturday morning comes, I'm the guy that arrives first. Meeting Gary was like a step back in time. Well, it's all stuff I love. Well, I'm just gonna take a quick look around. As I was scanning the room, I'm looking for gems because a guy like him's gonna have the odd gem. Well, this is what I decided to do with my life, become a collector of ephemera. It's not the material that, that, that I'm interested in. It's a, the soul of the material. I don't think I've ever seen that many Elvis Elvis clothes it's taken me about 15 years to collect these half a dozen that I got here. The uh, Elvis Presley Foundation went after the people who painted these in Mexico and where they even stop painting. Thank you. Thank you. That's a bit of overkill, isn't it? To stop a guy in Mexico from making a buck. Well, good luck. Literally a buck at yeah. time, right? Well. Velvet Elvises are the worst of the worst and the best of the best, depending upon where you come from. I've had lots of Velvet Elvises in the past. They used to be really funky and collectible. Then they died off. Now they're getting come back again. Okay, there was one Velvet Elvis that was quite appealing because the guy had a double chin quite like mine. <laughs> that was the fat Elvis period, yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> I could kind of relate to that period. <laughs> My Velvet Elvises uh, are, are not for sale. It's not a matter of the value of them, it's just a matter of that, you know, I love these guys. It'd be like, you know, me leaving a girlfriend. <sighs> oh, love my tummy. Pretty well anything else, my arm can be twisted. I notice you've got, looks like a poster in the corner from a movie. Yeah, that's an old movie that had a dope tie-in. It was a really interesting poster from probably the early 50s, back when they were trying to outlaw comic books and they were doing the anti-drug propaganda. I love the wording. She looks like an angel, does the work of the devil. <laughs> it's beautiful. Now, your airplane mm -hmm. you either got the tabletop version or the ashtray, or the ashtray version. The, yeah. This is a tabletop version. What would you need to get out of your airplane? Uh, I'd probably need to get it somewhere around 500 bucks. Wow. Where I come from, that's full bore retail on that. In fact, I sell them for less than that, yeah. more retail. The thing is, we can't buy retail. Even if I love it, I can't pay retail. Your circus poster, mm -hmm. probably 40s, looks to me, 40s, I'd, 50s. I'd say that. Made to just slap up on a wall and, and leave it in town when you left. left. Exactly. Right? What would you need out of that if you were gonna sell it? Oh, probably a couple hundred bucks. Yeah, I see again, you know, that's sort of retail on them. Uh, with the stuff that I love and have a passion for, my prices are going to be a little bit higher. Yeah, it sounds it, like it, you got a love and a passion for just about everything. What's the purpose in having something in your life if you don't love it? I see you got some tins back there. Is yeah. it okay if I go back and take yeah, a look? Yeah, absolutely. I spotted three tins, and I took the one that I thought was the least expensive first, just to get a sense of where he was coming from with his price. The reason why this one is sort of attractive is because of obviously the image on it. Mm -hmm. I think it's probably American. So what would you want for that? So I thought if I could get that for five bucks, I'd sell it for 20 and maybe make 15 bucks. Um, 25 bucks. You, you know the retail real well. Back it goes. Okay, let's see. Now the radios, is there anything in there? I don't see anything there that's starry. He's got a rack of radios, and you can tell he's got a good eye. You got that little goofy little one that looks like a bit like a robot. What is that? This one here? Yeah. Oh, no, that's a, that's actually a cigarette holder. Oh, cool. It had a space age look to it. When he pulls it out, it's actually even cooler, frankly, than what I thought it was. You'd put your cigarettes in here, yeah. and your matches in here. You'd have it on your coffee table, so when your guests came over, they would go, oh, there, I'll have a smoke. What so. would you need for something like that? That I'm not going to part with. I've, <laughs> uh, I've, uh, Why is it that everything I like, you don't <laughs> want to part with? He really did love his things, but he's an accumulator. Guys like Gary are tough because He's paid nothing for the stuff he buys, but that doesn't mean he loves it any less. It's not that it's got any value to it. I just like it. Well, so do I. The, the design of it. 
So I, I changed my gears and I said, okay, forget the collectibles. I'm gonna go flip through a few records and see if I sure. can find anything. Sounds like a plan. If he's got something that's turned on its side and shoved in a slot, I might have a better chance of getting something off him because there's more of them and they're less visible to him at all times. You got the floor reinforced in this place? Oh, uh, yeah, I do. There's about 15,000 albums here. Let's see if I can find some ugly ducklings here. A lot of people are surprised about this, but records are one of the hottest things right now. Ah, oh, there's an ugly duckling girl. And the stuff that sells best is Canadian psych rock, Canadian prog rock, because it's really rare. Hey, Gary. Yeah. What do you want for this one? I work much better when there's a stack rather <laughs> than on an individual level. Maybe a little guilt's going to set in because he hasn't sold us anything yet. And if I put together some records, I can maybe make a deal. The candy goody gumdrops. I have never heard of them. View? Obviously, you have. You bought it. Scott all of a sudden gets into a little bit of a zone. W? It's not original. There it is. And I know that, uh, you know, loaded. leave them alone, go for a coffee, <laughs> which is actually what I did. I got okay. your two sticky fingers and your. I got a Frank Zappa. We're only in it for the money. OK. Oh, New York Dolls, too. Do you have New York Dolls? Let's see. Yeah, loaded. I'm sort of buying partially for my own collection here. Good check. And then I came back. On the, the Rolling Stones ones are good mostly because they're Andy Warhol covers. That's right. But you're paying everything. Everything is to do with the Andy Warhol zipper cover. That's right. right? Yeah. Okay, Gary. You asked me to put a pile together. I put a pile together. Let me see what you want for that to see if we can do some business. Okay, let me just do a count here. It looks like you picked out the real cherries here. Uh, well, of course. You're just flattering me. <laughs> just flattering me to get my money. So you got 25 albums here. Yeah. Some of these are worth large, you know. I don't like to hear that, okay? Well, I don't like to hear that. Not till know, I go out the door. For 25 of these records, 400 bucks. So that's basically you're looking at 15 to 20 dollars each. I was originally thinking a wholesale price for me was between five and 10, knowing there's a couple in there that I'm gonna pay more for. So that would have put me at two to 250. And I, I think I'm stretching it for me to, uh, to make money on it to go to 275. OK, well, there were some other things that you said you were interested in? I wanted to see if there's any way I could sort of get his mind off that price. You told me you had a fan. OK. Where's that? That's down in the basement. Grab a couple things to throw in the pile and get, get the price down. OK, well, why don't we go look at the fan? OK. You go down and you're, you're in good hands, Gary. OK. And here's the big one. It's made in the United States by a company called Born Auto. Okay. But Electra Home and Kitchener bought Born Auto fans and put their logo on. So what would you be looking at on that? Um, 100 bucks. People like big industrial looking fans. And here's the mini version of the big one that was downstairs. So what would you want for the little one? 50 bucks. They were a paired set, so you could have the big fan and you could have the little fan sitting on a table beside it. I'm thinking, yeah, I was thinking, if you group the records in with the fans, I was thinking 375. Mm, I don't mind being crowned, and you know that's part of the whole negotiation process. Make it four, and we got a deal. Mm. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, okay. You got a super deal on that vinyl. Well, I sure <laughs> hope so. I like people that uh, grind with a smile. Most people do business with me, leave here with a smile on their face. <laughs> well, I, I because, you know what, there's a few albums that I want for my own collection in there, and I can sell a couple. OK. Like, I wish more people in the antique and collectibles business were like Scott. For me, that was a successful pick. I got a bunch of really good records. I love records. My wife loves records. My friends love records. So for me, it was a good pick. And I think we'll make some money to boot. I'm happy if Scott's happy.
Gary, it was a pleasure. Yeah. You're a real collector. It's always a pleasure to meet a real Absolutely. collector. Absolutely. Okay, we'll see you later. All right. You know, we didn't get a whole lot of what you'd call traditional collectibles, but we can make some money off those records. Kicking and screaming, I'll drag you into the 21st century. Like to see you do that. <laughs> What I love about this part of the country is it's been around for so much longer and it's been so heavily populated compared to Western Canada that there's a ton more stuff here. Oh, look at that. Look, there's a coat button on the side of that building. I gotta stop, see if it's for sale. You're the ultimate picker, so I'm... For every coat button you see in Calgary, you'll see 40 here. I drove by and I saw your coke button on the front of the door and the person inside gave me your number to give you a call to see if you wanted to sell it. You know, the coke side, the big coke side. How much? You're not serious. No, no, I offered more than that. I offered 300, but obviously we're miles apart. Well, thanks for your time, Rick. Okay, talk to you later, bye. <laughs> How much? 1,400. Run, don't walk, yeah. right? <laughs> well, no, no, doesn't hurt no to try, done, right? Yeah. right? No harm done. Did you get a good night's sleep? You ready for picking? For a route. I was up for four hours watching poker on TV. And I figure I know when to hold them and I know when to fold them. <laughs> you were all pumped up about Christy. We got our work cut out for us today. Christy's just a huge show. It covers a huge area. There's literally hundreds of vendors, hundreds of booths set up. When Sheldon and I go to a show like this, one of the things we're looking for is stuff we don't see every day. We have arrived. Oh, here oh, yeah, we go. There are the tents, yeah? Yeah. It's a good day for picking. It's a great day for picking. Yeah, I haven't been this excited to be at a show for years and years. Gates open, 8 o'clock, and the adrenaline's rushing. And... Look at that picture over there, eh, Scott? That's hilarious. One of the first things I noticed was an oil painting. We literally had walked in the door. It was the first thing we saw. It's actually better as you get closer yeah, to it. Yeah, it's not bad. Thomas Mitchell worked with the group of seven, yeah. You've got 300 dealers with six or 700 tables. What do you need for it? And you're saying, am I going to spend 400 bucks on the first thing I see? I'm going to make a call on that one, Scott. Yeah? We'll be back. That's a great picture. Well, I'm phoning my art dealer, buddy. Yeah. Hey, Doug, it's Sheldon. Uh, can you get right back to me? Uh, give me a call. I need your help. Sooner is better than later, Doug. Serendipity. Let's see if it's there in a few minutes and yeah. uh, keep, keep picking. Okay, so how do you want to do this? When Sheldon and I go to a show like this, we generally split up. You go your way, I'll go mine. Because he likes different things than I like. What's the price on the Addison? I need uh, $150 for it. Wow. Great piece. You got a price on the chair for me? Would you take 100 No, I wouldn't. And we're trying to cover as much ground as we can as quickly as we can. I love this. Yeah, I spotted some bellows. They've got that north wind mass carved right into them. They look good and they're functional. These were as good as it gets for that sort of category of item. T250? Today, yes. What do you have on the Joe? I bought all of it for $100, including all the outfits, the rifles. I think your price is fair, but price is fair. There's, no much, there's nothing I can make off it. That's Can I ask you about this? Napkin holder. It kicks out an IQ question. Is yeah, that... put a coin in, a little card to pop out. This one's probably from around, you know, the you know, 40s, 50s. Yeah. Maybe earlier. Would you take 75? I got to pick and turn it over. That's fine. 75 it is. Yeah. That's some cheap there. This guy's stuff will all be a fortune. There's interesting things, but they all seem to be priced way too high for me to be able to buy them and make money on them. So I, I, I'm going to keep looking and see if there's that one piece that jumps out at me. Girly stuff. Is this your chunk of birch bark? Yes, it is. What can you tell me about it? I would say it's probably about 1940. Yeah, I love it. Did you say 100 bucks? OK, yes, yeah, sure. Sold. OK. OK, that's where I want to go. Unfortunately, I'd sell that for about a quarter of that price.
I just don't know that there's anything to be made off that. I'm seeing 80% of the stuff is the same old stuff I see at every show, priced too high. That is the ugliest phone I've ever seen. We're, it's not stuff I can make money on. We just can't do it. 2200 for the set. Well, I know sooner or later I'm going to find something, but I, I have to admit to being a bit discouraged. I'm still waiting on the call from my buddy that knows art and has all that information at his fingertips. I'm waiting and waiting and you know what the heck with the detail if I'm not getting the information maybe I'll take a shot on it. Uh, my beavers are gone. He who hesitates. A chap came in about 10 minutes after you were here. Yeah. And you said I'll take it. Unfortunately uh, uh, I'm still waiting for the call. I'll go out and find something else killer. I love that color. I just don't know how the heck I would want to carry that thing. Beauty. Oh, yeah. King's Plate winner. It's a great image. Early horse racing up to 1905. The King's Plate, which is now the Queen's Plate. What do you think? I mean, that's killer, isn't it? You don't see them. You just don't see them in the original frame. What do you have on it? 950. Are you hung up on that price? No, I'm I'm negotiable. Hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I walked away. I was afraid of the bolt of lightning coming down at me. It's early. Yep. I'm gonna hit you with your first good sale of the day. Would you take five? Give me seven and it's gone. Split the difference at six and we got ourselves a deal. Done. All right. I mean, I think we can double up on that one. I was a little jealous that you picked that one. <laughs> you can be my partner. Good eye. I'm heading yeah. that way. I'm behind you. I could see it from a mile away. There was a circus banner. I've dealt with them before. I wasn't sure if it would be 500 or 5,000, but I knew it was something I wanted to take a look at. Oh. Yeah, killer. Wow. Is it right? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's signed down there. Virtually every rodeo, old time rodeo, had a trick rider if they could find one. There are a couple ladies actually in action. I just love the image. Yeah, the image, the is, image is killer, isn't it? The right? image is killer. Yeah. I thought, wow, that's a great thing for Calgary. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. A couple of Alberta boys here looking for a bargain. <laughs> we like this. Yes. Yeah. Where'd you get it? It came out of a restaurant in Montreal, actually, so it's part of the decor there, so really? it's the 1960s. We thought we'd see how, how aggressive we could be and see if we could buy that. We're here, we're doing some picking. Yes. We're buying low, we're selling medium. Right. We're going to turn it over. I don't want to insult you, but I wanted to offer you 500 bucks for it. I couldn't believe it when you offered him 500 bucks. Can't do it, so. Usually when a guy's got prices like that, if you offer him, like, almost half of what he's got on it, what's your best offer? He's not biting. 950 is our best, yeah. No room to maneuver. No room to maneuver. All right. Scott, what do you think? I got somebody in mind, but I don't, uh, yeah, I don't exactly. think there's enough potential room in it for us to make that a kind of investment. Well, I share the booth with somebody else so you can speak to him. We're looking at this piece here. What can you do for us? We can't really go down. Would you take 800 on it? We love to do it, but we can't. Just well, you don't can. have to love to. I'll just peel it out, and there <laughs> you go. It's eight bills in your pocket. There's some profit in it for you, and maybe a few bucks in it for us, too. We bought this two weeks ago in Montreal. It actually was hung up in a restaurant. It took a lot of money to get it off of them. So you're saying you're not budging? We can't really budge on 850. this. 8.50. You know, Jamie, 850? What do you say, man? Jamie's looking. <laughs> did you see that smile? Jamie's yeah. saying, yeah, let's go. Grab the 850. <laughs> grab the 850 and run. Right? Yeah, look at it. He's nodding. Grab the 850 and run. He just said it. Come on, let's let's get a deal going here. Come on. I know what he's saying. He's saying we're gonna walk. He I said, already walked in my mind a few minutes ago. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Crunch time. 850. You guys say yo or no, yay or nay. Uh, we're we're 850. It's a deal. It's not a deal. How about 900? I got to talk over with Jamie. Holy That's the best I can do. Smokes, man! 850. It is, and that's our last offer. Yay or nay, guys? I'm sorry. I, no I, harm I, done. I'm, thank you very I'm much. I'm sorry. I'm thank sorry. You. Well, we'll walk and see what happens. Gave her a shot. Too good a shot, probably, eh? I got nothing against them and. I hope they come back. <laughs> I love that thing. And I still think it was a good deal. 
at 9.50, but my problem is I'm mad now. Can't win them all. <laughs> hey, Scott, you're grabbing a coffee. Can you get me one, too? Sure. And almost everybody marks their stuff up so they can come down a little bit. I just got mad. Thanks. Thank you. Scott bought me a coffee. That rarely happens. The first guy just made me so mad. Yeah, I just, I didn't, yeah. I just didn't even, I don't yeah, want to give him my money. I hear you, Scott. And now I know he's really mad because he didn't even ask me to pay him for the, my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> There's a nice tool cabinet. Yeah, but what's that? It's a copper viewing casket. Yeah. Wouldn't it be funny just to have it as a coffee table? Oh, a coffee table. Killer. How about 100 even? Where did Sheldon go? How about 110? Sold. Scott ain't going to be happy. I bought a faux car. Mountie. I cannot find him. This isn't Scott's sort of thing, but uh, we now own it. It's going to guard our purchases. I put a leash on that guy. I know it's a big show. I know sooner or later I'm going to find something. Sure enough, so I have great old White Owls counter store display. It's got everything you want. It's got the great graphic. It's big. It's old. It's both a Canadian and an American company, so it's got double coverage there. I'd like to know, what do you have on it? Uh, 1800 The only problem with it was it was expensive. And did you have any room in it? I'd be 1500 I'm not seeing a lot of stuff I can buy volume to make money on. I thought I'm going to buy the best thing or the best two or three things at this show. Are you open to package deals? Oh, definitely. And your Coke button, how much do you have on that? Uh, it's 595 So I'm thinking to myself, wow, we, we can sell that Coke button. You went from 1800 on the White Owl to 1800 for the pair, I think. Yeah. Ah. See, what I was thinking, and I don't, I don't want you to be mad at me, but I, I was thinking 1500 would make yeah. me happy. Yeah. Because then I figure I'm paying 1000 for that and 500 for that. Uh, you really are a picker. <laughs> I, I am, aren't I? Let's take a break and uh, just talk about it for a minute. And we'll see if okay. there's something else that we can maybe add to the Absolutely. sweet in the pot. Go for it. Okay. All right. Is there anything you see here that you... Well, there's a couple things around the corner here. I'm just looking though for the pieces that are quick to flip. Like, I think that sign's saleable. Yeah. Take a quick peek at that creel. It's a big one. You don't see the big ones that often. Yeah, it's a little age, right? This white owl piece is cool, too. Oh, yeah. That's the clincher, Scott. Uh, then we threw in the white owl poster. And that'll perhaps help sell the, the white owl itself. So that could only help. What we're thinking here is mm -hmm. the white owl, and this is obviously a natural to go with it. Absolutely. The coke button, of course, we talked about, and the telephone sign. And mm -hmm. we're trying to get ourselves to a number that you can live with on mm -hmm. all of that. I was thinking 15, you were thinking 18, mm -hmm. we're thinking two grand for the, the four pieces. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have to go back to school now. <laughs> <laughs> nice driving, yeah, that ain't going to work. So what, what can you do? Um, I'll do you two on this guy, which brings us up to 2,000, and I'll do you another uh, 200 on the bell sign. It's 2,200. I was That's... gonna say 21, how about we no, do it? No, 2,200 is, is a really, really fair price. I brought a certain amount of money to spend, and it was either gonna be a little bit on a lot of items, or a lot on a little items. Okay, one last shot. 22. 2300 and you throw the creel in. Done. All Done. right. I mean, it was a great buy for us, and, and he showed he can play the game. He knows what he's doing. Good Thanks to do much, guys. Good to do business with. Appreciate it. Thank okay. you very much. The value of $2,000 is apparent to him. That was funny. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it wasn't apparent to some other people. Yeah. Maybe, this, maybe we can use this as a negotiating tool. I surprised myself on that trick rider sign because I was so mad when I walked away, I didn't think that for any amount of money would I buy that sign. Will you take 10 bucks for this? What would I have on it? 14, absolutely. You promise to put it to good use. 
But then Sheldon and I started talking about it and thinking, you know what? We, we can still maybe double up on that thing back in Calgary. It's a killer image. That's the problem. And I hate, I hate going back and eating crow. So I guess the prophet got the better of me. <laughs> I've come to negotiate. Yeah. I've come to negotiate. So uh, we're still interested in trick riding here. Yeah, it's nice. Did you guys have a chance to talk? 950. Hold it. 950. We're checking 900. Yeah, you were at 900. Yeah, we're going to talk at 900. Didn't work. It was just as painful the second time as it was the first time. But hey, it's it's business. If we can't negotiate on price, would you throw in that little deco ash Dan, just to just to sweeten the pot? We'll uh, nine, a nine, a 950 yeah. with the deco. Yes. Okay, no problem. All right. At least you got him to throw in that ash. Tray. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's tear it out. Let's just get it rolled up before he changes his mind and he wants a thousand for it. <laughs> Congratulations, man. <laughs> I think we'll, we'll make some money for sure on the carnival sign. You're a hard man, but it's good right. stuff. And an extra few hundred bucks on the ashtray. How much is that doggy in the window? <laughs> <laughs> He's 200 and he doesn't bite. Just because it was so much fun the first time, would you take 100? Oh, God, <laughs> no. Well, that was a hard negotiation, don't you think? You got that right. Although you did get this out of them, which was better than nothing, right? Better than a kick in the pants. Yeah. yeah. I spotted the water skier motion lap from about 200 feet away. I got to talk to you about your motion. Mm -hmm. It looks to me it, it works, I presume. It worked beautiful. I wish I'd brought a generator. That's a killer lamp and best condition one I've ever seen. Right. The broken one sold last week on eBay for 350 The perfect one sold three years ago on eBay for 3500 So the price of that lamp is somewhere above 350 <laughs> And could still be north of 3500 And I went, because oh. it had a little sign on it saying, make me an offer. And I thought, well, I can't make an offer even remotely close. I could see paying four or 500 for it, but even then I'm stretching. I never dreamed I would ever offer somebody 500 bucks for a motion lamp, but I'm offering it to you now. Well, I never thought I'd get married and I've done it twice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it is the nicest one I've ever seen, and I would like to own that. Well, we're close. The 500 would be fine. We have a deal, sir. Deal. It was a great buy, because that is flat out perfect. There's a killer bench right there. Scandinavian pine, original paint. Love it. I love it too, but it's big. What do you say? Yeah. I could get buried in that, don't you think? 550? Does that work? Sold. Yeah. OK. I don't like lifting heavy things, but Sheldon apparently doesn't care about lifting heavy things and transporting them all the way back to Calgary. Yeah, do you grunt a lot when you move furniture? Yeah, well, I had no idea. Look at my little pinhead mounty. He's ridiculous. <laughs> Isn't he good? Why did you buy him? Ooh. All right. Hey. <laughs> See, you don't have to join a health club. If we don't double on this, you are paying for dinner for the rest of the year. I really had a good day today. I mean, we made some great buys. Actually packing it up, I'm thinking, wow, we did really well today. We'll make some money. The life of a picker. I was so happy to have that White Owl sign because I've done a lot of White Owl tins over the years, but I've never seen a store display. I love that stuff. It's not as heavy as I thought it would be, this White Owl thing. If I throw him, does it make any difference? I'm only ashamed of one thing we bought. When we triple up on him, <laughs> that Mountie is the ugliest thing I have ever seen in my entire life. Let's go, man. We were wheeling, we were dealing. I just, I had a great day today. This is what I live for. That was some good picking. That was, <laughs> that was finger picking good. Sheldon, where are we going? See that fork in the road? Yeah, take, take it. it. <laughs>
<laughs> Scott and I are heading over to see Steve DeRoche, a local dealer, and he's going to give us some appraisals on some of the things we picked up at the Christie Show. I'm an antique dealer. I've been in this business uh, probably better than 20 years. If we made a mistake on a piece, we're going to unload it, get our money out of it, not going to ship it all the way back to Calgary. Steve Scott Cousins, Steve Drew. Hi, Steve. Sheldon Smithens. Hi, Sheldon. This is a little bit off the, off the beaten track. Scott and I are saying it's really a one of a kind. 950. Yeah. With the deco. OK, no problem. Let's get a little confirmation that we've got something good here. Oh, this is in really nice condition. Great subject matter, Annie Oakley type stuff. They're called tent banners. They actually used to put them right out on a wagon, going from town to town, and you're probably in the twelve to fifteen hundred dollar range. We're taking it to rodeo yeah. country. Yeah, so well, it's, you're taking it to the right place. Yeah, real easy, quick flip. It's not all about money, but that was too good an item to leave. It was just too good for where we come from and for the people we know that love that stuff. You see, I got my motion lamp fired up for you, so. Yeah, these were made by Econolite. They started quite earlier than this lamp. They started in the 20s, but this one's up in the late 50s. I had a bit of butterflies, because I was half expecting them to say that we overpaid for it. I never dreamed I would ever offer somebody 500 bucks for a motion lamp. The 500 would be fine. Absolutely pristine. You got the holy grail there. This lamp is between $3,500 and $4,500. Wow. When those numbers came out of his mouth, I just was shocked, absolutely shocked. On a good day, you might do a little better than that. Wow. Hey. And the water skier is, the water skier <laughs> You got skier a buyer is, for it? <laughs> <laughs> when he told us what it was worth, I realized I'm not keeping that. It's going to be sold. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. You have a good day, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't believe that. There's another pick to be had. Beautiful country. Well, let's go. We're on our way to Roger's place. We're going to see a 150-year-old barn. Unbelievable stuff. Here on the right, yeah. Oh, for sale. Be Roger. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Roger. Sheldon. Nice to Scott. meet you. How are you? Sheldon. What's the story here? You had an old barn and you want to get rid of some stuff. Old barn, drive shed, workshop. We've got a lot of old junk around. Some was here when we bought 25 years ago from the old homestead, the original farmers. But it's good stuff. You guys will like it. Good junk. That's exactly what we like. Excellent. I'll lead the way. Just follow me. <laughs> Everything's for sale at rock bottom prices. Yeah, Roger's what I'd call a gentleman farmer. He's a pretty sophisticated guy. He knows what he's doing. Uh, let's tell you if it's windy or not. Yeah. <laughs> in case you hadn't noticed. He's a little bit rambunctious, I would say. Take a close look. I don't want you missing anything. And I think that there's going to be a little bit of fireworks during the course of the day. That's my guess. Help yourself. We oh, want yeah. anything we can buy cheap and make money on. I walked into the first room, and I just took a look around. Wow. So then I saw Sheldon start climbing. Kind of curious to find out, is there some quality or just straight quantity? So I dove right, well, I want to say in, but I sort of dove up. It was a pretty good vantage point from up there. Is this the mortar or the pestle? People love those things. They're a great display item. Man, this thing is heavy. That's why the biggest uses to grind up the herbs and spices. So 10? Oh, OK, so. Done. That was an icebreaker, that mortar bowl. All right, I think it's showtime here. It's really essential that game on happens. If it happens easy and early, then at least we're all on the same page. Hey, Roger, there's a little sleigh under there. It's solid. It works. Just take 10 bucks for that? Come on, you got to do a little bit better on that one. 11. <laughs> did, you, did you say 15? Well, we'll just get the ball rolling. Okay. 15 it is. OK. I found something that I would normally never buy, but I like the color of it. That's, meat grinder, that's, right? That's a good one, yeah. I would normally just kick a meat grinder over. I wouldn't buy one for a buck. But there are some people that are decorating their country kitchens, and it's red. And they want the red color. We're going to grind you right now, because we don't normally buy meat grinders. We made a lot of pork sausage with that. So what you're telling me is it's paid for itself over and over again, so you'll let it go cheap. Well, no. Well, I'll give you 10 bucks for this, just because it's red. If it was.
there's any other color, I don't want it. OK, so th there's a whole basket of grinders there, yeah, too. Yeah, you know, and I left them because they're not red. I like the process more than I do the money. There's a lot of good junk there in those boxes and cans there. Apparently, you're walking by the good junk, Scott. See, there's another red thing. That's uh, for, for the garden, too. The corn seeder, it's something you don't see a lot of. The seeds fall down from the bin, goes right, to, right down the tunnel, and it drops in one at a time. You just walk along. Somebody will stick that in the corner of their cabin, and it'll look great there. And I'm going to offer you the five bucks on this, because it's got pieces missing. Look, Look, it's missing the back. Are you it's trying missing to make a strap. million bucks or what? Well, no, but I'm trying to make at least five or ten on it. But that's red. Yeah. <laughs> it's red too, yeah. yeah. So what do you want for it then? Ten bucks. Ten bucks. I tell people. you what, Roger, that Teresa's a lucky woman. She's got humor constantly. Can you say she? that a little louder, please? <laughs> oh. Scott, did you check out the guitar? Yeah, I'll take it. That's an antique. Oh yeah, there's a guitar. Look at that, it's an old Quebec guitar. Norman, unfortunately, the back of it's pulled right off. That, that's well worth the five bucks you're gonna spend on it. For five bucks, you get a deal. Okay, that's good, because when you see the other one, the other so one is- So that's not just it, the case for this one? No, no, oh, the okay. other one is, is, is the valuable one, and it's worth a heck of a lot more than five bucks. So 10? I'm always hoping for an old Martin or an old Gibson, an old Epiphone, but pull out this old, weird steward, I think it was. But it looks nice, doesn't it? And they made a bunch of those for the department stores in the 30s, 40s, and early 50s. There are some guys like Jack White from the White Stripes. He plays old okay. guitars like this. Excellent. And, and well worth the $15. Uh, OK. Yeah. OK. okay. okay. That, that made my pick so far. Let's go down and check out the shop. All right. So here we uh -oh. go. Whole new ball game. I immediately spotted a photo on the wall. Hey, that's interesting. I think Scott was trying to nudge me out of the way. Well, I think we both reached for it at the same time because as soon as you can't miss that when you see it there, yeah, right? Yeah. I just happened to have the edge on him this time because I'm a little older and a little wiser. Uh, I think it was more that I thought I was going to get my hand bitten off if I reached for it. <laughs> that's an old photograph. Those Indians were, were heading to the reservation after they were forced to go there. Roger had a pretty good idea that he had something good there. This is one of the more valuable prints right here. It's not a $50 picture. Yeah, that's a great little photo. It's got everything in there. It's got bows and arrows, a few muskets. You see the horses at the back, the teepees, the cooking pots. You, on this, you have a price in mind. It's 200 bucks. I'd say 100. 150, not a penny less. You know, I, Sheldon, I know it's good. I just don't know how good it is. It's very good. Well, I'll tell you what, I didn't want to leave without it, because it could be the key to our day. Why don't I bend over backwards this time, because we'll get you back on something else. 150 it is. Could be a famous image. It could be just one-off image. We don't yeah. know that. Why don't we just put that back up there for safekeeping? That's a gamble. I don't mind taking it all. I'm guessing that's the barn. That's it. I keep looking at that barn and those wide planks. That's for sale, too. We think it's built in the 1860s, and they even have the old hex signs to keep the devils out of the barn. Wow. Oh, yeah. Just the sort of structure you don't see in our part of the world. Wow. Look at the timbers. Is this thing safe to walk on? Yeah, yeah. I, I go up there all the time. I feel how heavy this is, and tell me if you want to move this across the country before we ask Roger about it. Um, I guess it depends on whether he's got a price per pound or not. No, it's not by pound. Twenty bucks. Sold. Okay, load it up. Do I have a say in this? Absolutely. I've got a spot for you to sleep for the rest of the pick. Yeah, thanks for that. The setting is great. I love the barn, and Roger is also colorful. Well, this one's promising. It says junk. It says mom's junk. Is mom's junk, can I look at it? Sure. Five dollars for the box. This one's cheese ball 70s with the cheese ball 70s coffee okay, pot Okay, a dollar design. for the box. My last offer right now. <laughs> Roger. Just, just give, <laughs> give us a second to make sure. Isn't, you know. isn't Teresa going to give you a rough time? She's not here. Getting a kick out of them. We're having some fun. and. Uh, that's why Scott and I are pickers, is uh, we're here for the fun of it. You'll be losing sleep tonight if you don't take it. And to make a buck along the way. Uh, I'll be losing sleep if I do. How about this? Watch this. He thought that cash register was the holy grail. That's an oldie. There's no question about it. You know they wholesale for two to 400. And I always have a laugh with guys like him because 
He's pointing to stuff that I couldn't care less about. You're getting to the good stuff now. 1894. Old don't always mean gold. And we're looking at stuff. That, what is that? That he's going, oh, why would they want that? Perfect. It's an old solid oak butcher table. How big is it? Uh, seven or eight feet, three quarter inch. How about old doors? He obviously had no interest in that table whatsoever. That would make a great kitchen table in a big country home, wouldn't it, Chung? Yeah. Make the question is, I'm feeling weak. <laughs> we got to stand it up and make sure that it's actually gonna gonna stay together. Man, it's heavy. It, it'll hold 300 pounds, 400 um, pounds. It had honest wear. It had green alligator finish on it. Oh yeah, that'll work, eh? Fifty dollars. He just wanted that thing gone. <laughs> Done. So that one's a money maker. Man, that's heavy. No pun intended. That was an interesting pick until we got to the load up. And that's when I got a workout. That was a lot of heavy lifting. Now that's an Ontario guitar case show. Take this picture up front with you? Yeah, please. Those pants are great too. Those pants are perfect for picking. What do you want for them? I'll sell them for $15. Do you have anything in the 35? No, no, you gotta lose a couple pounds. And so far I'm going at a rate of about two pounds a pick. Well, that was a lot of stuff. Yeah, I think that's a load. Hey, Somebody thanks. Yeah. Right. If we can ever figure out a way, we're coming back for this barn. Perfect. Well, you know where I live. OK. <laughs> thanks. Well, thanks. Bye-bye. He was funny.